Hello, my name is Madison Adkins. I'm a senior cheerleader. My name is Mason Perrell. I'm a senior football player. My name is Isabella Scully Tenpenny. I am a senior band member. We have all worked very hard to follow the rules so that we might have a season this fall. We would like to ask that all of our fans please wear a face mask and maintain social distancing throughout our game. By our fans following these guidelines, it gives us a greater opportunity to complete our season. You play a major role in allowing us to continue and complete our season. So, if you could please remember to mask up, back up, and wash up at all times in our facility so all of us here can enjoy a full fall season. And now, a word from our sponsors. Atomic Credit Union has been named a best in-state credit union by Forbes magazine for the third consecutive year. Based on trust, terms and conditions, branch and digital services, and financial advice, Atomic Credit Union is your trusted, local, full-service financial institution. Visit us at any of our 13 branch locations or online at www.atomiccu.com. Our roots are right here in this area. We're local. Many of us were born and raised in the communities that we serve. Because of that, we make our decisions right here at the bank. Some places have local branches. We have local roots. Ohio Valley Bank. Community first. Member FDIC. Visit us online at ovbc.com. The Atomic Credit Union Student-Run Credit Union Program provides financial education in our school system by teaching children the importance of sound money habits. The program operates in all Jackson County schools, including Christian Life Academy and Saints Peter and Paul Catholic School, as well as 20 other school districts. Atomic Credit Union provides fun activities throughout the school year and during the summer to keep our area youth involved. For more information, call 1-800-652-2328 or visit our website at AtomicCU.com. People's Bank is very proud to be part of your local community. Did you know that People's has local professionals here to help you with some of life's challenges? That's right. People's Bank isn't just great at banking. Their local professionals can help with so much more. The dedicated staff at People's Bank can help with all types of insurance and financial planning too. If you are looking for a great teammate to help you build your success, give, give People's Bank a call. Working together, building success. Holzer provides certified athletic trainer Jason Crawford and certified chiropractic sports physician Dr. Kelly Rausch to administer sports care for the Jackson Ironmen. You can get back in action with the Holzer Sports Medicine team at Jackson Hospital on Tuesday and Thursday, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Thank you, Holzer Sports Medicine, for taking care of our athletes' needs. To schedule an appointment, call 740-446-5534. furnace on the fritz whether it's a quick fix or time for something new you need a dealer who knows what it takes to warm things up and a bryant dealer does whatever it takes it takes attention to detail the right tools and friendly knowledgeable service bottom line it takes a bryant dealer to bring the heat it takes stockmeister plumbing heating and cooling call 740-286-2055 bryant whatever it takes from masks and online classes to canceled graduations and half-filled stadiums, it's been a crazy year for our kids. From all of us at the Kelly Wiley Group of Keller Williams Excel Realty, thank you parents, thank you teachers, thank you coaches, thank you administrators, thank you community. Most of all, thank you players and students for doing what it takes to get through this new normal. We're all in this together. We will respect our planet, our fellow, and our community, and our 
As Ironman and Iron Ladies, we will respect our opponents as fellow athletes and worthy competitors. Like us, they have worked hard to represent their school. We will respect our teammates, we will respect everyone's effort. Because each one makes a contribution to the team in his or her own way. We will respect our coaches for their efforts in molding the teams that represent our school. We will respect the officials for enforcing the rules of the game and keeping the game fair for all participants. We will respect ourselves. As athletes, we are role models in how we could conduct ourselves in school, during competition, and in the community. It's a reflection on us, our families, and our school. So we ask all fans in attendance to encourage and cheer for your team. Let the players play, let the coaches coach, let the officials officiate, and let the spectators be positive. Respect the game. Respect the game. Respect the game. Respect the game. Respect the game! Now, your 2020 Jackson High School Varsity Cheerleaders. Madison Adkins, Senior Captain. Tyler DeFoy, Senior Captain. Chloe Fryman, Senior Captain. Maddie Strelzer, Senior Captain. Taylor Thorpe, Senior Captain. Macy Tripp, Senior Captain. Jaden Webb, Senior Captain. Leah Alford, Jr. Kaylee Vall, Jr. Kaylee Backville, Jr. Haley Davis, Jr. Lauren Elliott, Jr. McKenna Folden, Jr. Olivia Kennedy, Jr. Emma Rasp, Jr. Gabby Webb, Jr. Caitlin Webb, Jr.
testing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would direct your attention to the 50-yard line for tonight's coin toss. Your referees for this evening are referee Brandon Leith, line judge Randy Clouser, umpire Jason Dearmon, head linesman Rich Bunner, and back judge Phil Wilson. All right, gentlemen. Good, how are you? Quick and simple, guys. My name is Brandon. I will be your referee tonight. I'm going to have my crew introduce themselves. Hey, guys. That's right. Have fun. We're actually fortunate to be here. Uh, very happy to be here. Week four. Everybody's excited. Okay? As captains, it's your responsibility to keep your team under control. Okay? We don't want to have to do that. Is that fine? All right, real quick, Miami Trace, you are the visiting team. This is a head. Jackson, this is a head. And this is a tail. I'm going to flip this coin in the air, and you're going to call it loud enough that Jason can hear it. Ready? It is a head. Jackson, you have won the toss. What do you like to do? Jackson has won the toss. They elected to defer the second half. Miami Trace, you want the ball? Which end would you like to defend? If you will face your backs toward your goal. All right, again, 
Jackson has won the toss. They have elected to defer to the second half. Gentlemen, good luck, stay safe, and let's have fun. Ladies and gentlemen, last week during senior night, due to technical issues, we did have one band member whose video did not play. We would like to take this time to go ahead and recognize her this evening. Please direct your attention to the 50-yard line and to the video board. I am senior band member Katie Wood. Tonight, I am escorted by my mom, Beth Wood. After graduation, I plan to study music education. And again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending tonight's game. We would like to remind you once again that there is no re-entry into the stadium after your ticket has been scanned, so please be aware of that. If you leave the stadium at any time, you will not be able to re-enter. Also, we ask that you please sit only in rows designated with the red dots, and please sit as a family group. Leave an empty area between dots before the next spectators. Thank you very much. Welcome to tonight's contest. We are fortunate to get the opportunity to let our student athletes compete during this pandemic. We ask that you follow all of the guidelines and please be flexible as guidelines can change quickly. Fan behavior must be appropriate at all times. Anyone that is asked to leave a contest at JHS will be denied entry into future contests for the remainder of the season. Coaches, officials, trainers, and administrators are being carefully monitored on how well these contests are administered, so your cooperation is expected at these contests. Please be proud and respectful of your child's school and community. Please be thankful and grateful that competition is being permitted. Enjoy watching our athletes compete, and let's have a great season. Masks are required, and please maintain social distancing at all times. Families should sit together and socially distance from other spectators. No congregating once inside the facility. Please move directly to your seat. Please do not enter the team bench or locker room areas unless requested by a coach or school administrator. Spectators, please set as a family group on and in between the red dots and keep six feet distance from the next family group using the dots as reference. At the conclusion of the contest, exit the facility immediately. If you are waiting on your child to take them home, please have them meet you in the parking lot. Concessions may be available. After your purchase, please return to your seat. Young children must remain with their parents at all times. Thank you for your cooperation and adhering to these guidelines.
Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Ryan Hurd, with assistant directors Sam Kugel and Mary Elizabeth Billman, percussion instructor Keith Wilson, auxiliary instructors Tiffany Strong and Alicia Mannering, we proudly present to you the 2020 edition of the Pride of Jackson, the Jackson High School Marching Ironmen! And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise for the playing of the Jackson High School alma mater, conducted tonight by Assistant Director, Mr. Sam Kugel. As we do each season, the marching Ironmen are recognizing branches of the armed forces at each home game. Tonight, we ask that all current and veteran members of the United States Army please stand and be recognized as the band plays your service song, Quezons Go Rolling Along. And now, will you please stand and remove your hats for the playing and singing of the Star Spangled Banner conducted tonight by Director of Bands, Mr. Ryan Hurd.
Again, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you tonight to Alumni Stadium and Holzer Field for tonight's matchup between the visiting Miami Trace Panthers and your Jackson Ironmen. There are restrooms and concessions facilities on both sides of the stadium. However, we do ask that you please remain on the side in which you are seated. Thank you. And now for the starting lineups for your Jackson Ironmen. Jacob Winters, 6'3", 230, quarterback, free safety, top one. Cade Wolford, 5'10", 170, running back safety, freshman. Evan Spires, 6'1", 215, running back, outside linebacker, and junior. Tristan Prater, 6'1", 185, receiver, corner, junior. Nathan McManaway, senior, 6'4", 175 pounds, wide receiver, free safety. Traylon Davis, 6'5", 240, tight end, defensive end, senior captain. Grant Maston, 6'1", 220, inside linebacker, junior. Blake Cross, 5'10", 220, offensive guard, defensive tackle, senior captain. Aiden Strozer, 5'11", 215 pounds, Right guard, linebacker, senior captain. AJ Denny, 235, 6'1, offensive line, sophomore. Girl, 5'8, 195, center, junior. Dave Norris, 6'2, 210, defensive tackle, offensive tackle, sophomore. Ty Jones, 5'11, 190, nose guard, junior. Mason Farrell, six foot, 175 pounds, wide receiver and quarterback, senior captain. Drew Bragg, 6'2", 195, safety, wide receiver, junior. Landon Irwin, 6'1", 190, tight end, linebacker, senior. Braden Powell, 5'9", 190, running back, even for line, sophomore. Holden Blankenship, 5'9", 155, wide receiver, corner, junior. Isaac Kuhn, 5'9", 150, kicker, senior. Get on your feet 
It's football Friday night. Get ready. Here they come. Your Jackson Iron Man. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Jackson did win the toss and deferred to the second half, so Miami Trace will be receiving the football to start the first half. The kick was returned by number 33, Landon Coe. The Colts Blankenship got in there on the tackle, and along with some help from Mitchell Mace. Good job there by the kickoff team as they hold on the 34-yard line and the Army defense on the field. Westman Melvin, number 18, is the quarterback. He's a junior. As they operate from the 34-yard line, right hash mark. And movement along the line of scrimmage. I come in from anywhere. It looks like it's going to cost the Panthers five yards. Five yard penalty. It'll be first to 15. First Ty Jones starts out at the nose guard position. Like position. Blake Cross and Pete Strauss are the two down tackles. It will be rotating throughout, though, the evening on there. Evan Spires starting there, one outside linebacker, along with Traylon Davis. Also, you have uh, Landon Irwin in there, Grant Maston at the linebacker position. And then back to LeBeau. Jake LeBeau gets about a yard. Shot just shy of the 30 yard line. So it's going to be four, second down and 14. Drew Bragg is one of the safety positions along with Jacob Winters. And then our two outstanding cornerbacks and Mason Perrell and Tristan Prater. A wing formation, double wing formation. As Melvin takes the shotgun snap, hands off to LeBeau. And he Whoa. Threw it up. Whoa. Oh, Grant Mast is just leveled him. At the 30-yard line. Got, got him low with Ty Jones in there. He slowed him up, and then Madison just put one of those Grant Madison hits on a guy and knocked him backwards there. Third and long now for the Panthers on this first possession. And Panthers go without a huddle. It's third down and 14. Alvin in the shotgun formation. There's a man in motion. But he was snapping it for a rollout to his left. And throwing it upfield, the ball was going to be out of the range of Landon Cope, in his receiver. Aaron had good coverage on that, and it falls incomplete, brings up a fourth down and 14. You know, we talked about the perfect weather, but there is a little bit of wind out there tonight, which could be a factor in the passing game. Pete Wilson, good job on the defense. Yes, it was. Uh, 
think Melvin hurried that a little bit, had a guy out there, but didn't come close to him. I think he was worried about the rush there on third and long. Also threw it into the wind, what wind there is. I don't know. We'll see if that becomes a factor throughout the game. They line up on the and fourth, and not a funny situation, and now a timeout is called on the field. Was there a timeout or just some official motion? The official issues? timeout. Yeah, the officials are stopping it. They line up in the shotgun. Well, they're going to call a penalty. It's going to go against Miami Trace, another illegal shift. Either illegal shift or formation or substitution or something, but five more yards back. So this drive started on the 34. They're going to snap it from the 25 on this punt, so the Army could get pretty good field position. They're punting into the wind. Take a bullet back deep. For the airmen. It's being cautious right now because they're not in the punt formation. Let's see them. Now they'll shift back. And it'll punter stands at his 15 yard line. But now Evans fires in with both back feet. Ooh, good snap. snap. And it's end over end kick, very short. And it takes a bounce at the 45 yard line in Miami Trace territory. And that's where it's down. Great snap, but not a very long kick in the air. I mean, get good field position. Defense stepped up strong on that first series. It's like they're going to give credit for a 20-yard punt. Hunter had time, but, boy, he hit it straight up in the air, higher than farther, and it uh, didn't get any bounce at all. It was out of bounds. Jackson starts out. Uh, haven't touched the ball yet, but they're starting already on the Miami Trace side of the field at the 45-yard line. Winner, the sophomore, that the quarterback for the airman, trips out wide to the right side. Winners takes the snap and rolls to his right, looking downfield, looking, and throws it upfield. And it's for Tristan Trader. He falls a little bit behind. He had to dive for it or go back for it, and it falls incomplete. Except for the second and ten. About that much approved offensive line. Let's start on the right side. AJ Denny at the one tackle position. Caleb McGraw at the guard. Aiden Strauser, the senior center. And then at the guards, we'll have Blake Cross and Grant Baston on the left side. Ty Jones and the Spires form the eye. And if the handoff goes to Spires over the left side, he'll pick up the four yards down to the 41 yard line. Tight end will be Traylon Davis. And as you said, Ty Jones got the spot there in the eye formation. Got a pretty good kick out block. Allowed Evan to pick up four yards on first down. Evan Spires, the running back. Kate Wilford, not, probably not going to play tonight. Remember the injured ankle last week? They held him out the second half. He is dressed, but uh, did not participate in pre game warm up. And now there's movement along the line of scrimmage. It's going to be offside against the Panthers. The metal clock at five yards. Of- He's up a third down in one. It's a little different from last week where the Ironmen were jumping off consistently. Panthers have now, I think, picked up their third five yard penalty. The Ironmen, instead of third and six, now we're looking at third and one. That can change the play call. Yes, it does. On the left side, handoff. With the fire starts uh, back across the grade, still on his feet at the, thir- at the 15, inside the 20, now down to the 16 yard like those ever fires. Walked in tonight with his brother, Jaden Spires. He's wearing all green over there at OU and uh, very proud of his younger brother. Jaden had such a spectacular season last year for that undefeated Ironman football team. First and 10 for Jackson Ironman. Here's the winner's one. Wow. Pass. Tr- Tristan's Walker. wide open. Touchdown, Jackson. Tristan Trader. Nobody was in 10 yards of him, and the Ironman are on the board. <laughs> I didn't want to steal your job there, Doc, but he, there was nobody covering him, and he's in the slot position. I mean, they all pointed at each other in that secondary back there, but, boy, Jacob just had to put that one in the air, and that was a sure six. It's like some confusion for sure. Absolutely. And uh, if the airman six points, a touchdown for Tristan Frater, and now the extra point. Cross will snap. Evan Spires to hold, and Isaac Coon will have the Extra point. Boy, quarterback's eyes light up when you see a receiver out there and nobody guarding him. Snap is there. Kick is on the way. And it's good. Break any action here at Jackson High School. The airman on top. 7 to nothing. We'll be back with Jackson Airman football. Six, 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 six. A lot of land comes with a lot of work. The new Kubota MX Series has a lot to offer, including the versatility to mow. 
airbrush and snow. An optional spaces cab to keep you comfortable in any conditions. A front end loader with excellent loader lift capacity, hydrostatic or gear transmission options, and affordably priced. Visit your local Kubota dealer, Rice Equipment of Lucasville on US 23 or in Jackson at 486 Burlington Road, or visit them at RiceEquipment.com or on Facebook today. Hometown Chevrolet knows that it takes a great team to win. The kick is returned by number 20, Caden Griggs. Hit on the stop for the Ironman. Back at Jackson High School, the Ironman lead is 7 0, and the kickoff by Coon is taken at the 35 yard line. What do you call that kick, Dan? A pooch kick. A pooch kick. And uh, it will be uh, returned out to the 42, a 7 yard return. Pete Wilson, the last drive by the Ironman. The Ironman can't do it any better. They convert a third down along the way. Four plays, 45 yards on that short field after. Miami Trace went, went three and out. A touchdown comes on a 16-yard pass to Tristan Prater. A wide open Tristan Prater extra point by Coop. 7 nothing Iron Man. And the shotgun. Melvin gets the face to the He keeps it, and he will get in, out the, past the 45 and now tackle that's the 48-yard line Coop, here on the near side of the field. Good pursuit by Jacob Winters to chase him down, but... Very good staking in the backfield, so the quarterback kept it. It looked like we were wrapping up that running back immensely there, but we got fooled a little bit, so they pick up seven yards. Second and three, we're at nine minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the first quarter here at Jackson High School. Ironman leading at seven to nothing. And on second and three, handoff over to the left side, and LeBeau has the first down as he crosses the 50 and down into. Ironman territory at the 43 yard line. One thing we don't like seeing is Jacob Winters make too many tackles. He's had to make two in a row there. A little help there by Drew Bragg also on a pretty good pop, but not until that one goes into Jackson territory and another first down for Miami Trade. Well, okay, getting it done right now for the Panthers. It's first and tennis for the Ironman 43. Not another, their first, up, by the way. And hand off to LeBeau. LeBeau stood up now and Maybe a gain of one as the uh, game tackling at the 42 yard line. Like Blake Cross on the bottom of Powell Aiden Straws are the two seniors there, both the defensive tackles. We've got a player down for Miami Trace. So both teams now will walk toward their sidelines and we'll see to what extent the Trace player is one of their interior linemen. Not listening to my program. Eight minutes and 40 seconds to go. First quarter, Jackson 7, Miami Trace 0. We have a timeout on the field as we have an injury to one of the Miami Trace players. The medical staff is attending to him right now. And while there's a break in the action, let's take another timeout. We'll be back as Jackson Airman football continues right after this. At Jackson County Banking Center, our roots run deep and our branches are strong. What does that mean to you? It means that our family tree is rooted in 1867, making us one of the nation's oldest banks. It means that our family tree consists of branches across Ohio that we change with the seasons to offer the latest banking technology. We're experienced community bankers, excited to help with whatever you need. Visit bcnbfamily.com to benefit from our deep roots and strong branches. Member FDIC. True fans know that success in football is And now back to the action. Eight minutes and 40 seconds remains in the first quarter. The injured Miami Trace player helped off the field. There's been a lower left leg injury and a couple of his buddies out there. Yeah, he's That's needing total assistance. They're going to maybe try to carry him off here a little bit because he can't put any weight on that left leg. So that Miami Trace player, we're probably not going to see the rest of this evening. It'll be second and nine. Jackson did a pretty good job defensively on that first snap after Trace ran two nice plays in a row, Pete. Right, and uh, Trace uh, thoroughly, but Trace hadn't had a lot of room uh, right in the center guard slot, but, but pretty good when they're on the outside. So I think that even though they passed for a lot of yards, they look to me like a run first team. Well, when you've got 
Jade LeBeau in there, you've got to be a run first team. The young man is a very special runner, and so far the airmen haven't let him break anything yet, but he is capable on any snap. Second down at nine for the Panthers, and it is LeBeau breaking through one tackle. He's at the 41 yard line and driven backwards. Well, for a moment, it looks like he's going to be stopped in the backfield, but uh, broke through that and tried to get to the outside and stopped right at the 42. Good pursuit by the Ironmen. Look like Aiden Strolls are in there, along with Grant Maston, getting a lot of help defensively. Were they going to give him procedure or a motion? Again, it's called the Miami Trace. Oh, well, that didn't see the flag. You were ahead of me on that. I think now they got to decide. you want a third and maybe eight or take the five-yard penalty be second longer? The Ironmen. They're going to decline it. That's confidence in your defense. The line of scrimmage will be the 42-yard line of check. Miami Trace goes towards the scoreboard here at Alumni Stadium. Third and get more out wide to the right. Nine. Yeah, third and nine or second and 14. Third He's in that defense. And in the shotgun there is Melvin rolling to his right side. Has pressure from Traylon Davis. Trying to catch him. He's got a man wide open. And broke it up. Or did he catch him? Yes, wow. he did bring it down. Gilmore with an outstanding catch at the 11-yard line. It was very special for them. Gilmore has been their top receiver far and away, and that time he got behind the defense. Uh, Mason Proud made a nice job recovering the ball. He deflects the ball, goes up in the air, but Gilmore keeps presence fine. I think he catches it while he's laying on the ground. He's on his back and brings the ball into his belly for a big reception. He got the yardage 31 up. yards there, and Gilmore, he, he's kind of like our, he's kind of like their Tristan Prater. I don't know whether that's a good comparison well, or not. I think that was he is. Kind of a Prater catch. It was. I mean, a number of those. Slot to the left side, ball on the right hash mark. At the 11 yard line. Miami Trace with a first down. Here's Jaden LeBeau with the handoff, and he gets nowhere as he's tackled right at the line of scrimmage on that right side. Stockroom 601 player of the game last week. Blake Cross first on that tackle with help from nose guard Ty Jones. Ball remains at the 11 yard line. Stockroom 601 and Gillum Insurance. Get that right. Jackson leads seven to nothing. Here comes Tracy with a second and ten from the Ironman eleven yard line. And Melvin wants to pass, throwing it into the end zone, wide open for a touchdown in the game. Ran a just a quick slant pattern from the slot position, and he was untouched. Goes in the end zone for a point. After uh, and tie this game up, I think that's a little bow factor there, where you give a little play action in that backfield. Well, their receiver was not quite as open as Tristan Prater, but he was pretty open. Jackson, uh, I think, fit on the run, and the quarterback put it right on the mark, and it's now 7-6. to six. The 45 for the uh, trace is uh, Zach Warnock, and he is the kicker. That was the kick, and it's low, and the kick will be good. 7-7 seven, seven is your floor here at uh, Jackson High School. The Panthers have tied it up. Take a break. Be back. Jackson Airman football after this time. True fans know that success in football is all about tradition, dedication, and loyalty. Those same qualities are important to the Sheward Fox Insurance Agency. We care about what's important to you, and that's why we believe in helping you select the right insurance for your needs. We're proud to support companies like Ohio Mutual Insurance Group. If you want to protect your auto, home, farm, or business, you want Ohio Mutual on your team. Give us a call at 740-286-1708. We'd love to help evaluate your insurance needs and recommend the best coverage from the best companies like Ohio Mutual. Mutual. Go Ironman. There's something new at Quick Stop Marathon on Broadway in Jackson. Yes, enjoy crispy, crunchy chicken now at Quick Stop. Crispy, crunchy chicken is a Cajun-style chicken and is now available along with buffalo wings, shrimp, catfish, and a great variety of sides, including honey buttered biscuits, red beans and rice, plus more. And there's even a great variety of breakfast items. So put some spice in your life with crispy, crunchy chicken at Quick Stop Marathon on Broadway Street in Jackson. Warnock will kick it off for Miami Trace. It's a short kick it. over to the 26-yard line. The Ironman fumble the football, big scramble for it. Far side of the field, 32, 
and it will be Miami Trace football. Who's kicked by Miami Trace a little deeper than we've been going with it, but our receiver was running toward it. If he catches it, he's going to get a little bit of a, a nice run back, but it bounces out of his hands. It's a live ball, and Miami Trace was on top of it. When you kick one that high, your coverage is going to be right there, and they get the ball and mark it up the 30-yard line of the Jackson Ironman. Look at the Ironman looking at the strongest possibility this year of being behind in the game. Do you want to recap the last drive? That was seven plays, 58 yards on the Miami Trace scoring drive. Their second possession gives much better than their first. Touchdown on an 11-yard pass to Gage Miller over the middle. Warnick packed on the extra point, so we're dead even. Lots of both sides for the Panthers. And back to pass is Miller. Boy, deep. Got a man open, and it's not a touchdown. Gilmore with the over the shoulder catch. And quarterback laid it just perfectly. Perfect pass to probably one of the top receivers in all the uh, Southeast Ohio. Gilmore kept his concentration, and the quarterback dropped it right down in his hands. So, wow, that was a quick change in this football game. Jackson Ironman finds himself behind for the first time this season. 13-7 now in the score with the extra point coming. Take Trace uh, slow getting some, the first right personnel onto the field for the extra point. Brought down to just a few seconds to go. There's a snap is there. Now the kick, and it's on the way, and it is good. 14 to 7. Miami Trace with the lead over the Jackson Ironman. We'll take another break. Be back with Jackson Ironman football continues for that. When you hear this. The number to call is 740-286-5864 for the Glass Garage. Greg Hogue and the fine staff of the Glass Garage, located at 198 Morton Street, Jackson, is ready to fix that broken window. The Glass Garage is your auto glass specialist. They also do residential repair to fix that broken window at the home. The Glass Garage, phone 740-286-5864. Remember, the Glass Garage... Morning, close. Kickoff once again for the Miami Trace Panthers, and this kick is deep, and it'll be taken at the 14 yard line. Returning it up the right side of the field, and runs into his own man. It's blank is good with the return. Goes from left to right, tackled at the uh, 25 yard line. Well, we, co- we covered it, though. We, that was a costly turnover by the Ironmen, and that cost them the. the uh, Probably the first time they've been down this year, Pete Wilson. I believe it is. We've started each game 0-0, but uh, as a matter of fact, Dan, in the first quarter, if you win his first three games, Jackson now pulled his opponent 62-0. to zero. This has been an exciting first quarter, just the kind, of, the kind of excitement we don't like a lot of. And they're on the 25-yard line. He says, fires in motion, hits the backfield, and looking over the freighter right side, has the catch. He picked up about four yards out to the 20. Yard line. And the bubble screen out there kind of to Tristan as they send all the receivers to the wide side to a back short side. And Trace playing with a little emotion right now, aren't they, Dan? Yep. They got a little little kick to their step. Or they're pretty excited right now. Certainly are. They are undefeated as well as the Jackson Ironman. As the Ironman find themselves down for the first time this season. They break their own. They work out of the I formation. And the handoff will go to Evan Spires, breaks the tackle line of scrimmage, gets across the 30, and then he's run out of bounds. They're on the near side of the field. So I'll tell you, Evan Spires ran hard there just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Trace had a lineman, uh, Zach Bowen, only a sophomore, but he blew that play up. And uh, they give him a gain of two, actually, at the third and out, third down and five. He worked hard for those two. Again, the uh, winners step up under center. Jones and Spires form the eye, and here's Spires. He's hit hard at the line of scrimmage. 
number 2500 McBee with the big hit. Stopping Spires for a loss. You, you called it the um, well, trick. Man, the Trace is playing with a lot of enthusiasm. They've got the momentum right now, and they're playing very hard, and we lose a yard on that one. So we're going to punt for the first time in the month of September. Down to five, three, Which is an interesting stat in itself. It's been a long time since the Loki gave the cheese like that. Hunter is Christian Prater. Prater waiting the snap. Good snap and no pressure. And he gets this kick off. Good kick. Really? Spencer Gilmore back to the 31 yard line. Good kick there. Kick by Christian Prater. And it's a fair cut at the 31-yard line. 41-yard punt there by Tristan Prater, and we needed that one to push Miami Trace back into its own territory to start this drive. And that's where Trace would take over. It looks like the 31-yard line, 5.08 to go, and they scored 14 points really quick, and they've got the ball again. By the way, that 41-yard punt by Prater, his best of the season so far, although he hasn't had that many attempts yet. Great. How into the lineup at one of the down tackles for the Ironman on that interior of their defense. Trace breaks the huddle, have trips wide to the right side. From the left hash mark. And the handoff goes to LeBeau with the running rip. Big hole cuts up and it crosses the 40 to the 41. He'll be like he's going to have a gain of 11 and a first down for. The Panthers. Kevin Spires hits him first. Drew Bragg hits him second, but not till LeBlow explodes into that secondary, and they're moving the yard markers. First down for the Panthers, who are, boy, after the Ironman made that first touchdown drive, look pretty easy. It's been all Miami Trace since then. From the 42-yard line of Miami Trace, first and 10. Trips now wide to the left. That's Melvin in the gun. Hands off to LeBeau, and LeBeau is tackled. It's like Rex Ross, making the sack. Actually, Grant Maston. Yeah. That's where two of the best players in the whole league meet each other right there. Grant Maston hits you, but LeBeau ran hard at the gain. About, you know, he got a four-yard gain out of there, and there wasn't much there to get. It's the ball out for the 46-yard line. We are at uh, four minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Miami Trace leading the Jackson Ironman. 14-7. Jackson needs some way to get something going, get pumped up, change this momentum a little bit. Herman showing blitz and hands off to, to LeBeau. LeBeau breaking tackle, still on his feet, grinding and pushing the airman backwards, and he's down at the 37-yard line. The breaking tackle, that hard nose. Runs run, kind of upright, but boy, it's a lot of power. There's a flag right at the line of scrimmage. Good hole right up the gut. LeBeau ran, carried tacklers, but I think it's going to come back. And the Ironman defense may be catching a break here. Let's see if we can take advantage of that. Evan Spires wrapped him up to bring him down. Braden Powell chased him down from his down tackle position to help make that tackle. But boy, LeBeau showed some ability and a little more strength than I think we saw last year. Yeah, a year older at the... Uh... A little stronger. Certainly see it. He's, the ball is now at the, the Trace 35 yard line. Brings up second down and 17. Instead of the first down, the Ironman 35. It's back at the 35 yard line. The snap is wide to the left. And there was Trailer Davis to knock it down. The quarterback didn't get the snap. He went wide to his left. Did one hand it to bring it in, but Trailer Davis. Blocks his pass, and that brings up third down. Trailer playing that outside linebacker position. Right, actually man. lines Small up just about like the defense he's in. But boy, he was in the backfield with those six, five big balls up in the air. That, that was straight back. Third and long now for this Ironman defense. Maybe that one kind of woke the crowd up a little bit, didn't it? Just to the left, going out wide on the right side. That's for Melvin looking to pass. Uh, uh -oh. over the middle ball's intercepted by Drew Bragg. Ball was tipped off the receiver's hand. So very hard. Receiver reached up, got both hands on it, and goes straight up the air. Drew Bragg kept great concentration, came down with the interception. And maybe that did change things a little bit. Over now for both teams. And it's first and 10 for Jackson Ironman at the 47-yard line of Miami Trace. It's a soap. 
Three minutes and 27 seconds remaining in this first quarter. The Amherst are behind 14 to 7. Stock to the left side. Fires stands beside Jacob Winters. In. Winters takes the snap and he rolls around the right side. Tony finds him in. Winters picks up about 12 yards, but this is going to come back, holding against the Ironman. But Jack was actually going with an unbound foot to the left side, and Jacob Winters running to the right, turned the corner, but now Jacob comes up limping badly, and he is walking toward the sideline. Coach Hall is telling him to lay down so that they can take a look at it. Immediately, trainers are out there checking him out. That is Jacob Winters is the down player for the Ironmen. Pretty good run, but the penalty is going to bring it back. And the run gave him a 12-yard gain. This penalty it's right at the line of scrimmage. That is something we certainly don't want to see. Evan Spires now, I'm sure, taking a getting a talk to with Coach Hall for a minute there because he might be in the contest at the quarterback position, not at the running back. We're a little thin in the backfield, Kate. Wolford not playing because of an ankle this week. He stands in that huddle about the uh, first team offensive unit, but I think we're going to see him tonight. Three minutes and 21 seconds to the first quarter. Clock has stopped. Jacob's still on the turf. So they're talking to him and seeing him. No kidding. One thing about it, we've got the very best people around. Obviously, trainer Jason Crawford was out there immediately. Dr. Stephen O in there. Well, this first quarter hasn't been what we, maybe we were hoping for. Got it. Started out good for the Ironman. Yep, yep. But, you know, that penalty, that whatever they're going to, it's going to be a 15-yard variety. They've already marked 15 off. No, I'm sorry, 10. 10, yeah, 10 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. I'm going to be looking at a first and 20. Winters comes off the field walking with a little assistance, favoring that right leg. We'll see. That pans out, and it will be. We have said all along we have one of the top second unit quarterbacks that you would ever want to have in Southeast Ohio, and Evan Spire as well. Now, all of a sudden, he is going to be under center. Let's send to the. Game because of the injury to Winters. Here we go on first down and 20. Ball back at the 42 yard line of Jackson. Ironman, high formation, and a pitch to left side to Blankenship. Blankenship trying to get the corner. He's crossing the 45, giving the 46. Well, they're going to move him back to about just inside the 45. Golden Blankenship getting in run at the tailback position, and then we're lined up in the eye. They had Ty Jones at the fullback. Golden Blankenship, the tailback. Ball moved over to the left hash mark. Second down and 17. And the Paris works out of the eye formation. Play action and looking to pass, throwing it upfield, and it is incomplete. Bailey yep. Davis had good coverage on him, and his ball shot at the same time, and the defender knocks it away, but there is a marker down. Well, I say, and it came from back in the secondary, and I thought it was very close. I thought he maybe got there a little before the football trailing run, and that drag tied across the field did look open. Evans delivered the ball right to him. Hit immediately takes place, and the flag comes up, so it should be pass interference. Well, that will result in a automatic first down. That was a true bang bang play, and that one went in favor for Jackson, and they'll. Airmen now will move the yard markers and have a first down on the Trace 40-yard line. The for Jackson. The Airmen get a break there. Two minutes and 32 seconds remaining, first quarter. Now the ball into Miami Trace territory. Miami Trace, five penalties, 40 yards so far. Our Miami Trace uh, broadcast was next to us, told us they had 175 yards last week in that victory over Greenfield, a real sore spot. We're going to correct that. I think it's going to be second down in about two. That's a carry on. The penalty won't get the first down, but very doable second and two. Ball marked at the 40-yard line of the Panthers. I said that as I saw the chain game move down to the 40-yard line, but they have to come back, and it will be second in the long two. From the left hash mark. 
And here's, I mean, right in the middle is Jones, the fullback, and he will be stopped short of the first down. He crossed to the 39-yard line. He needs one more yard to keep the drive moving. Third down and a long one. Actually got, you know, as we know Coach Hall, he's, we're going to take two snaps at it if we don't get it, but we certainly like to start establishing some control up there in the front. And have Fires looking out of the shotgun formation. Unbalanced line to the right side. He steps up under center. And handoff to Blankenship. He's got the first down inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Flag came down, and it's going to be illegal procedure on the Ironman. They do it right away by the far line judge over by Miami Trace. Good hold, the point of attack, and Blankenship with a good run, but it's going to come back with the, the yellow flag. Yeah, I've been running away from the strength on that unbalanced line. And uh, they're going to wave, oh, wave it off. Okay. You know what? I thought that the official was a little confused with the formation since the airman went unbalanced. I bet he thought there weren't enough people on the line of scrimmage, even though there was. And it is a first down for the airman. It's at the 33 yard line of Miami Trace. Now down to 145 to go in this first quarter. Jackson trying to come from behind. They trail 14 to 7. Where's the I formation? Hitting the back of his blanket ship. He fights to get back to the line of scrimmage. He's a great job in there by number 78, James Gilson, 225 pound senior defensive tag, broke up that line. Yep, and you know what the airmen are trying to do is run to the short side away from the unbalanced line because you have you have uh, Traylon Davis over there. He literally becomes the tackle on that short side. Did a great job blocking there, but Trace had the pursuit. We're able to stop the play. Second down and 10 coming up for the air as they break the huddle. Trader out wide to the right side. Everybody else in tight. And rolling to the right is. Good pattern by Fires. He's going down to Trader. He got a touchdown. Wow. Oh, here we go. Laying it in perfectly over the shoulder of Tristan Trader. And he has man beat by a couple of yards. Crater gave a little stop-and-go action down about the 20-yard line. The cornerback bit, and then he went flying right by him. And you know what? Kevin Spires laid that one perfectly right on stride. Beautiful pass. Good catch, as usual, by Prater. And the Ironman have a big comeback touchdown to have an opportunity here to tie this game back up. Maybe change a little bit of there, which uh, is all on one side of the... Interception by Drew Bragg. Set this all up. Watch the snap. Fires through to the TD will hold. Kick by Coon is on the way, and we are all tied up. 14 14 is your score. Less than a minute remaining. We'll break away and be back. Jack the Maryland football continues right after this. Do you have a roofing or siding project? At Higgins, they manufacture steel roofing and siding every business day with 16 colors in stock and 70,000 pieces of trim. They are prepared to ship your project immediately. Remember Higgins for your 40-year warranted, Energy Star compliant, American-made steel roofing and siding. Located on AC Avenue, just off 35 in Jackson. Call 800-782-4239 or visit them on the web at HigginsRoofing.com. After an injury or surgery, how will you deal with discomfort or pain? How will you get stronger? In Jackson, patients and doctors are choosing the Experience Team at Fast Track Rehab for complete physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Fast Track Rehab is different with a highly focused approach to reducing pain, building strength, and flexibility. Push kick by Isaac Coon, taking at the 31 yard line. He moves around it, trying to look for an opening, and then scoops to the outside and we turn it off just past the 40 yard line. Made a good cut there, but holding Blankenship wraps him up, brings him down. They have pretty good field position. 42 seconds remains in this first quarter of play. It's been all Jackson, then all Miami Trace, and now Jackson comes back with the touchdown after the turnover. Five plays. 47 yards after the Drew Bragg interception. Touchdown comes on a 33-yard pass from backup quarterback Evan Spires to Tristan Prater. Extra point by Coop. Tied it up. 
And here's a man in motion, Copen. He's got the corner. Good job by Pace of Brown, stopping him right at the 341-yard line. Shuts off a block out there by the split in, and then comes up and makes about as pretty of open field tackle as you're going to see. Nice job by the senior cornerback who's having a spectacular senior season. I mean, almost three, but it looked like it was going to go for much more than that. Brown shut off that block and brought him down. One set. Now, well, maybe we just don't know yet, but we, they did put ice on the knee area of Jacob Winters. So we're not going to see him this half, I don't think. And it will be the end of the first quarter of play here at Jackson High School as the clock expires. And Jackson and Miami Trace all nodded up at 14 apiece, and we'll take a timeout. We'll do that second quarter action after this. All right, son, just keep your eye on the ball. Ouch, your boy sure can hit. He's costing me a ton, but he'll be worth it when he's in the majors. Until then, you should call Lone Central. They're experienced under edge in, in total yards, five to four in first down. Both wide receivers, Prater and Gilmore, have accounted for the touchdowns for both teams, two each. There's uh, LeBeau with a hole of uh, who starts up the left side and picks up the yardage out to the 47. True Bright getting up off the bottom of the pile there. LeBeau hits that hole so quick, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Big third and three play here. Sure would like LeBeau to brings see a third and three trade. on the 47 yard line. Midfield to keep the drive alive. It's third and short for the Miami Trace Panthers. Lots to the left side. Gilmore out here on the near side of the field. There's a handoff right now. They take it. Uh, Melvin will keep it. Fumble by the phone. He picks it up and trying to break some tackle. Still on his feet. It'll be a loss of the play. Back to the 39-yard line. See, Traylon Davis on the bottom of that pile had help from Drew Bragg. And Mason Prowl, and boy, great pursuit by the Ironman. Great job defensively, and also Braden um, Powell getting up off the bottom of that pile. Jackson defense there, right on top of that one. Also, back to the 39-yard line where it brings up a fourth down and 11. Are we going to see a punt now? We were hoping to see. I thought it was going to be an option of some sort. It was. It was. Definitely. The, uh, the pitch back to Lebeau was, he couldn't handle it. And so now fourth down and 11. Trace in punting formation. First punt by Trace wasn't very strong, so we'll see what happens now. The whistles blow, and timeout's going to be taken by Trace. They want to be organized for this. Just underway in the second quarter, 10.32 remaining. Timeout on the field, and we'll be back right after this. At Belicio Foods, commitment to the community is at the core of our company. We've been feeding people for over 25 years, and that means we've also employed folks from right here within the community. So we're proud to give a little something back. Yeah. 
Hunter will stand at his own 29-yard line. What is now Spires on the deep end. Now movement around the line of scrimmage. This will be a legal procedure against the Panthers. It will cost them another five yards. Fourth down, 16. Well, back now at the 34-yard line. Okay, that is the quarterback, Melvin, back there in punting formation. You always got to be a little aware that they could go for it, but, boy, it's just I don't think we're going to walk away on this one, yes. Esther Melvin is the punter, standing at 24-yard line. Good snap, and here's a kick. Gets it away. That's a good kick. It says the iron. If it fires this much, it bounces. It will roll dead at the 24-yard line. That one's on that yard. First punt wasn't very good, but, boy, that second one was a good one. Kicked it over or returned people's heads, so... Iron Man will be pushed back to the 24, 43-yard punt there by Melvin. He wasn't really very far back in punt formation, and he didn't take very many steps forward about one, but, boy, he got all of that one. 43-yard punt, as we said, over the head of Spire, so he didn't try to field it. Thankfully, they didn't get that much of a bounce, but still a 43-yard punt. Second quarter score, the Oak Hill Oaks leading the mighty Mentor Falcons 14 to nothing in the second quarter. It's an uh, empty backfield for the Ironman. As Inspire stands alone with spot to uh, left side, he hands it off, he takes it to Blankenship, he keeps it, he's at the 30, at the 40, still in his feet at 45, and out here midfield, Devin Devin Spires. Well, it was nice double tight formation of the tight ends in there. Ran, they fake the jet sweep to Blankenship, and then Devin just runs right behind the right side of that offensive line and did a fabulous job of just carrying people. A.J., Denny, Caleb McGraw, all of them in there. Get good blocks. Straws are on there, giving Spires room to run. 14-14 is your score. Jackson hands off the blanket. Ship this time coming in motion. He gets the handoff. He breaks a couple tackles in, in two. Green territory is all the way down to the 34-yard line. That time Evan hands the blanket ship coming off the jet sweep. Gets a good block down field by play. Drew Bragg. But there's a flag down, and all the airmen are walking backwards. It's going to be a hold called against Jackson. That's painful because... We were down all the way inside the 40, about the 34-yard line. Both teams battling the penalty bug in this first half. Penalty will move the ball back to the 37-yard line. First down and 20. Have it works for the right hash bar. Evan fires in for Jacob Winters, who was injured in the first quarter play. Drag comes out to the left. He's in the slot that way with Freighter out wide. And person long. Spires wanting to pass. Look, he has time. Throwing it down the field to drag, and it is broken up in a filmy like throw. Looks like number, number eight, great Gage Miller. Drew Bragg uh, has their feet tangled up. And uh, well, I think. Miller was actually face guarding Bragg on there, did not turn and see the football, ran right into him, even though the throw was a little bit short. Pass but it looks to me like they're going to pass interference. They're not going to mark it off, so that's a big penalty and keeps this. Herman back in a little more doable down in distance. First down now at the 48 yard line, make it first down and a long six. Fires again, empty backfield, sends a man in motion, and they take the hit, and he keeps it. And this time, Miami Trace is there waiting on him. He gets no gain on the play. And, and he is there, uh, tackled right at the line of scrimmage. You know, Trace has some very good defensive football players out there, don't they? And they have been extremely physical that time after the fake of the uh, Jet. They have been trying to find room behind the right side, and there wasn't any there. Last week's opponent for the Washington Courthouse Blue Lions all over Hillsborough, 25 to nothing in the second quarter. Here's Spires. What did he go deep? Got a man out there. It's, it's uh, Tristan Prater. And double coverage. The ball incomplete around the 20 uh, yard line. Well, did you see who's guarding him? Gilmore, two of the top uh, wideouts, receivers, and cornerbacks in the whole yeah, league. And that was a up for grabs shot. Goes off. All, all four hands basically incomplete. Now it'll be third down and a long six at the 49-yard line. 14-14 is your score. We're all tied. Jackson with the football. 
Like it's just in motion. And take the hand, and here's Spires going to the left side, trying to turn the court at the 40. He's up in it, but he has the first down. And Spires the ball carry for Jackson. Gates Miller straight for down. First down. And the Spires ball scored to the 37 yard line, and it's the first down, Jackson. Traylon Davis, Grant Maston, Blake, Blake Cross, all good blocks on that First left 10, side Jackson. of the line to give Evan the room. He's 37. He's 40 seconds remaining. First half of play. That's a big conversion to keep this drive alive, overcoming that penalty. Left to the right side. And here's the Spires who takes the snap and one step backwards and then goes forward for a couple of yards down to the 35. Spires the ball carry for Jackson. Evan obviously a threat at that quarterback position to run the ball, but certainly has showed the ability to put it up in the air also, had he? As he has. It's a touchdown plan to Tristan Brader at the end of the first quarter play. Second down in a long eight. Ball at the 35-yard line. Brader, Bragg, Frank and Schiff, they all go out wide to the right side. Unbalanced line. Bumble on the play. Spires picks it up, one in the throat, and he goes up the field. And Bumble will be cut by Prater. Oh, my. Yeah. How did he get that? Number 14, Tristan Prater. Spires with a great heads up play. What a present. It's uh, Tristan Prater. Good for an iron first down. 25 yard line for a first down. First down. Well, if you ever think we brag a little bit about Evan Spires, that kid is so heady. He's such a great kid. That time. Ball running around back here in the backfield. Same thing to do, just be dropped on it so you don't turn it over. Picks it up, throws where he knows the receiver's going to be, and hits Tristan Prater right in the, between the one and the four, and the airman move the first down marker. The 26 yard line, first to 10 Jackson. And here's uh, Blankenship with the carry, and he picks up a couple of yards down to the 23. The kid running behind Traylon Prater on the short side of that inbound line. Traylon had about a five yard block on one of the Panthers that their pursuit. Picked up Blankenship, keeps it to about a three-yard gain. Manaway comes in the sideline. Approaching the red zone. Six minutes and 55 seconds to go before half. Jackson, Miami Trace, not at 14. Jackson will work out of the I formation. Unbalanced line, and they pitch that way. And it leaves Blank out here getting the carry call. And he will tap it around the 21-yard line. Positive yardage, not much. It uh, brings up third and a long six. It's sweep off tackle, sweep there. The airman gets a decent block, third and six. Four down territory, probably. Although, right now, in a tight game, field goals would be critical, also. Yes. Moving five. McMahon away breaks. Out of the goes out wide to the right side. That's uh, Jones, Blankenship, in the eye. Or Jackson, and here's Spires on a roll-up. Wanting to go to the end zone. Those it short. What a Nothing. shot. Got a nice pass in at the five-yard line. The completion. First and goal, Jackson. Traylon Davis. Traylon Davis, the big target coming across on that First drag pass. For the iron. Again, and boy, Evan rolling to his right. On the three yard line. Is there a flag down back here? Oh my gosh, what a pretty pass and a catch, and they're going to take it away. Jimmy, an eligible receiver downfield. Ouch, play. ouch. Boy, that was execution there, and it's very bad. Ineligible receiver the call against Jackson. Does that have a loss of downs, is he? I don't, I don't I think, think so. so. But, and I think it's only five yards, but man, does that hurt. Oh, yeah. because we were it's at the five yard line for the first and goal situation. Third down now and eight. Ball just inside the 25-yard line of Miami Trace. With 5.40 remaining in this first half. We're all tied at 14. Spires to the rope that time. Yeah. And Spires again, waiting to pass. Looking, 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 throwing it upfield. Yes. It will be caught by Graves with those fun hands. Well, what, you know, instead of being at the five, let's just throw the number 22 into the end zone. Was that pretty? Evan Spires got time back there. He stepped back because he felt pressure coming, took a couple steps back, and then just laid it up in the air where only uh, Traylon Davis could get to it, makes a beautiful catch, and gives the Ironman the lead back. 14 now. With the extra points coming. 5.25 to go in the first half of play. Boy, did we overcome a lot of penalties in that drive, Pete? Both teams have had to do that. 
is uh, Isaac Green with his extra point try kick. It is on the way, and it is no good. No good. 20 to 14. The score that. remains. Jackson with the six point lead. Break in the action, and we'll be back with more Jackson Irvin football right after this. Today's Custom Butchering and Retail Deli of Wellston is your one stop for fresh local meats. From burgers, brats, and steaks for the grill, sausage or bacon for breakfast, or a fresh side of beef or pork for your freezer, Dave's has everything you need. Don't pass up their homemade chicken and ham salad prepared and packaged for any occasion. Cut fresh daily, you won't find fresher meat anywhere else. And don't miss our monthly special, local and fresh meat at Dave's Custom Butchering and Retail Deli on Scott Lane in Wellston. Hey everybody, we're back with the 15th consecutive year of the Gillum Insurance Player of the Game. Tune in each and every single week for Dan and Dan on 96.7 and they'll be giving you the award right after the game. And stop in and see us at 135 East Jones. Taken at the 31, that tackled immediately over on the far side of the field. Good hustle there defensively on that kickoff team for the Ironman. It was Brody Butcher down there getting the tackle. Ironman back him up. It's inside the 35. That's always pretty good. Pretty good job of return or the coverage of the kickoff. Simply hold it. 5:22 to go. The Ironman has had to fight hard to get this lead back. Pete, what a drive! Yes, the Ironman overcomes the penalties along the way and started fairly deep in their own territory. Nine plays, 76 yards. The 30, that was about the 24 yard pass to tight end Traylon Davis from backup quarterback Evan Sparks. the Ironman at 2014 league. Extra point missed, however. Ironman leads 2014. Melvin hands off to the fullback this time, but he will not gain a yard. Stop that at the line of scrimmage. Blake Cross on the bottom of that pile, and I'll tell you what, he did. Yeah, I give him a couple feet. Did look like he got it back to the line of scrimmage. Good search there by the Jackson defense. Made the 33-yard line. Nine-play drive, very unique for the Ironman this year. If you look at our box scores, a lot of times one-play drive, two-play drive, three-play drive, but we've been scoring nine plays. That's a nice job offensively to keep that drive going. Spread the field with slots at both sides. There's Melvin looking to pass. It will be picked up by Evan Sparks at the 45. He's still on his feet. And he'll go down at the 40 or 35 yard line, 10 yard return after the interception. You're right, how of a play that was. The ball looked like it was going to go over his hands. He kept backtracking and then went high up in the air and makes that steal. And are they going to call a late penalty? Let's see what they're talking about. Traylon Davis was talking with the official, but the flag was thrown and he's picking it up. Second time tonight. Obviously, no penalty on the play. It's a turnover and a big one in the Airman up short field against the right a a ten yard return by Spires. He reached up and picked that off in traffic. Returned the ball ten yards in traffic. Ironman had the ball in the thirty five yard line and what an opportunity the way this game was going in the Ironman personnel situation. The Ironman turned it around, take the lead, and now they have the ball to start the second half. If they can do something here, it would be huge. Well, 4.37 remains on the clock here in the first half. The Ironmen have three timeouts remaining. Coach Wilson wanted an explanation of what the penalty was. I th- I'll tell you what I think what happened. I'll bet Traylon Davis was throwing a block once he saw the interception, and they're probably calling a penalty, not realizing it was intercepted in Ironman football. From the left hash mark, 35-yard line. Here's a pitch to the short side of the field, and it's Blankenship being tackled after a two-yard gain. And he's trying the right side, the left side of the line, and uh, he'll bring up second down and eight. Well, it's a beautiful time here with 4:20 to go on a running clock. The Ironmen still have all three timeouts, short field in front of them, six-point lead in a game that is between the two leaders right now in the Frontier Athletic Conference at three and zero this season. The Ironman breaks it up with Sprag and Trader going out wide to the right side. Backs are in the eye, Jones and Blankenship. Spires wanting to pass. Rolls to his right. Now looking, looking. He'll take off and run. And good stiff arm at the 30. 
And another one at the 31 or, or 26, and he'll get close to the first down, about a half a yard shy of the airman. I give credit the offensive line, given Evan time, he could not find an open receiver. He stood there, stood there, stood there. Then he's able to find room scrambling. Two stiff arms, beautiful effort there. Looked like a running back, didn't he? And uh, takes it down to third and one. He is a running back. Oh, thank you. I think he's also a quarterback. Well, I think he's shown that so far. He's whatever he needs to be, right? Yeah, he does appear to be able to play anywhere. Move it to the right hash mark. It's third down and one for the airman. And now it's flying to the right side. And they go to the left, and it will be, boy, Blankenship is hit hard in the backfield, or right at the line of scrimmage. He's going to be, he's got a pretty good spot here on the near side of the field by the official. Yeah, I think he did get a good spot. Say, Holton runs hard in there, but he took a shot. They might have to bring the chains out on this one, because it is going to be right at it. That's okay. Stop that clock. Let's kind of get our senses together a little bit. It's going to be fourth and inches, or first and glue. 10 from the 25. 247 remaining is this first half play. The Irish lead it by 6. That's 20 to 14. I tell you, what, the more, just don't have 2020 vision anymore, not even with the glasses, but from where it looks to me on where the yard marker is, I believe he just barely eked that out. I think if the lines are straight, we got it by about 3 4 inches. Let's see here. How about Chain Games are earning their keep for the first time tonight? Have to bring out the field. Wow, it's close. It will not be a first down. It's yeah. Fourth and fourth, and the official showing it. He's putting his fingers about two inches apart. What a big play in this football game! Fourth down and in, in just a couple inches. Time to break the huddle. All rest at the 25-yard line. Fourth down. Fires under center for the Ironman. Anticipating the quarterback sneak. It is Evan Spires, and second oh. effort gets the first down. Boy, that was awfully hard to sneak that because they put three people right on top of the football over the center, and Evan took a shot where he didn't make it, bounced out of that, and then jumps over and gets it. So, great job there by Aiden Strauser and McGraw, and um, well, I'm sorry, Blake Cross in there to give him just enough room to get that first down, keep this drive alive. First down. Well, he made it by about a foot, didn't he? Move to change it, but now they will. And it's a ball rest just inside the 25-yard line. But it is first down and 10 for the Ironman. Remember, the Ironman have three timeouts. Action and eye for the Ironman. Here's Evans Fires looking for pass. Going down the sideline and over the trader. He got the catch inside the five. And he, he threw that like running a needle and hit the uh, receiver, Tristan Prater. Unbelievable accuracy by Evans, Spires, and Prater. Have, have we said one of the very best receivers in all the southeastern part of Ohio? What a spectacular execution on that play. Mark that ball about the three-yard line. First down and goal for the Airmen. It's an exceptional play by both the quarterback and receiver on that one. And here's Spires will hand off to Lancashire. He's, he's caught. Uh, from behind, making a, a Preston Reed making the stop, stays the touchdown, but he gets down to the, just inside the two. Herman can actually, it's not all bad, beat that clock up a little bit. 143 on a running clock, second and goal from the two yard line. We have all our timeouts. Now down to 135. Herman. Slowly going to the line of scrimmage, like you said, Dan, milking that clock. And he worked out of the eye. Fires the blanket shift. Blanket shift hit hard. Second effort. He gets it down inside the one. Officials will mark him at about the one foot. Well, he took a shot, not quite at the line of scrimmage, but then he fell forward, a mark of a good running back. Hunter Webb reports into the backfield now. Now we have one minute remaining in the uh, first half of play. Ball third down and goal inside the one-yard line for Jackson. Evan runs all the way over to the 20-yard line and takes the, uh, the call in from Coach Andy Hall. Ball right at the one. Uh, Crater out wide to the right side. 
Back in the eye again. There's fire. Bubbles the ball. Does recover, I believe, that the loss is about one on the play. Coach Holcomb immediately take a timeout. Now you have that decision. Oh, my gosh, they're saying Miami Trade got it. Sure looked like the airman had fallen on that ball. Wow. Basically. And now that Miami Trace dodges a bullet inside the five-yard line, they'll take over the 30 seconds remaining. Wow. It did look like we had it, but obviously somebody for Trace got in there, dug that out, and that's a huge play because we are right there knocking on the door to get that fourth touchdown in this first half and not to be. Ironman still hold the 20-14 to 14 lead, but, boy, it beat. We ate up a lot of clock and some yardage there. Right, and how close did Holden Blankenship get on that last play? Ouch, ouch, ouch. Yeah. Ironman with a prevent defense. Just 30 seconds remaining, and now Finley Flag again comes in, and it will be a sideline warning against Jackson, or is that a penalty? Through the flag, but I would think it's only a warning. I don't think we'd have one yet. Okay, it is a warning. Now we're ready for play. Gilmore, the dangerous receiver out wide to the right side. Now let's take that. But we're both breaking it out to the right side, and he'll be tackled in bounds. At the nine-yard line. Tackled by a majority of the Jackson defenders. Landon Irvin in there in that pileup. Also, Traylon Davis. And they're going to let, well, timeout. Time timeout is called by the Panthers. Just 18 seconds remaining in this first half of play. Or the Iron certainly dodged us. Or, you know, I mean, the Panthers, Panthers dodged yes. us a big ball. The Iron had it inside the one-yard line. Well, got her second interception, has a short field. We just kind of grinded it down there. A beautiful pass from Spires to Tristan put us in a, in a great position there. And we were running three plays. But, boy, the fumble, those turnovers so critical. Pete, each team has a couple of them, I think. Oh, yeah, they do. Uh, I and have lost two fumbles and Trace has two interceptions. 20 to 14. Stay with us at halftime. We're hoping to have a halftime guest. They are. Yes, we're hoping a very local connection here who is uh, out of one of the assistant coaches over at Miami Trace. So we'll talk about that here at halftime. We'll have people's statistics for sure. Talk about some of the big games in the area. Second down and three for the Panthers. Jackson leading the Panthers by six points, 20 to 14. That's the place on the right hash mark. <laughs> and handoff by Melvin is to uh, LeBeau, I believe, and he stopped shy of the first down. And that will probably be the last play of this uh, this first half. Ty Jones with the tackle, but boy, the clock's going to run out. And I'll tell you what, one of the things we were a little bit worried about last two games, Ironman up 33 to nothing at halftime. One game, the first string did not take one snap. The other game, they took one series. Say, we need to play a full game. Well, I think tonight we're going to play a full game. Yeah. Coach Hall talked about that. that I think that's the last game. Sure. These uh, starters have not really been tested you know, for four quarters. We're going to be tonight. This is a pretty good Panther team, a little better than I expected. They are outstanding so far in this first half. 20 to 14, Jackson with the lead. They will have the ball when the second half comes. But uh, we still have lots to talk about here at halftime as the Jackson Iron Marching Band preparing. He was on Gibson Stats. We'll, we'll take away, uh, take a break. We'll be back right after this. Timmy says it's good. Thank you. 
direction of Ryan Hurd with assistant directors Sam Kugel and Mary Elizabeth Billman. Percussion instructor Keith Wilson. Auxiliary instructors Tiffany Strong and Alicia Mannering. We proudly present to you the 2020 edition of the Jackson High School Marching Ironmen. The 2020 Marching Ironman opened tonight's show with a smash hit from 2015, Confident by Demi Lovato. And now for your favorite Canadian singer-songwriter and teenage heartthrob, Justin Bieber. Please accept our most humble apologies as the Jackson Marching Ironman jammed to another 2015 work of art off the album Purpose. Here is Sorry. Next, we feature a song off this artist's fourth studio album, Red. 
the winner of Best Female Video at the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards, I Knew You Were Trouble by Taylor Swift. Ah, the 80s. Nothing like throwing your favorite cassette tape into your Walkman while you head down the street in your Converse and fluorescent clothing to your big hair appointment. It was a great time to be alive. Speaking of the 80s, the Jackson Marching Ironman closed tonight with a chart-topping sensation by AHA. Here is Take On Me.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention and applause. We are the Jackson High School Marching Ironmen. When your vehicle or semi finds itself stuck on the road, call the rescue team at Angles Garage and Wrecker Service located at 10992 Chillicothe Pike in Jackson. They provide 23 and a half hours of damage free towing and recovery service. Whether you need roadside service, a tow, or repairs, you can count on their team to get the job done. Angles Garage and Wrecker Service is also an authorized U Haul dealer. Call Angles Garage and Wrecker Service at 577 3636. Let's hook up. Osborne Equipment Service. Is Ralph there? You sure you've got the right number? Is he there? Well, what's he look like? He's got white hair and spots. Is Ralph your dog? He's a Dalmatian. Why would he be here at Osborne Equipment Service? You always say you have something for everyone. We do with service for trucks, trailers, buses, and RVs, and we're family owned and operated. Maybe you should look in your backyard for Ralph. I'll just call his cell phone. Your diesel specialist since 1979. Osborne Equipment Service in Jackson, Ohio. Call 800-937-3501. Mayu Brown Funeral Home and Southern Ohio Cremation Services, 135 Broadway Street, Jackson, is a proud supporter of Jackson Fighting Army Football. Jason and Shelly Brown and the fine staff of the Mayu Brown.
testing. all the way back, and uh, their only loss this year uh, in the Atlanta classes to the Iron Fighting Tigers. So, Galpolis, well, some two old SUL rivals reunite under very strange circumstances. Well, how about our other two members, Benton County, No Kill, both having good nights at this moment. Benton County leading Nelsonville, York, 14 to nothing at halftime. That's an impressive score, uh, because last week, Nelsonville, York, you know, they've got a great program. Um, this isn't one of their greatest teams, but they're certainly a... Uh, Certainly a contender in the TVC Ohio, and they really put it to Makes last week. Makes had not been beaten. And this week, though, uh, they did not carry that momentum so far uh, into Benton County. The Vikings lead 14 to nothing at halftime there, and uh, they're only one game off the pace behind Wellston. And so uh, those two teams do battle, as always, the last game of the season. That would be at Wellston. And the Oaks, the Oaks are leading Minford. The score I saw was 14 to nothing at halftime. Very impressive. Uh, the Minford Falcons uh, have had good football for a number of years. They uh, gave Wheelersburg a game in the early going uh, in a point of score fest. They scored 36 points to beat a Washington Courthouse team earlier in the season. And uh, Minford considered to be a strong team in the SOC, but they're going into Oak Hill and right now trailing 14 to nothing at halftime. And Oak Hill, Coach Paul Carver, really a run-oriented team. But right now that defense must be playing lights out because Minford has always been able to put points on the board and has done so this year. Not tonight. Pretty exciting. Also, we, we have to talk about the battle of undefeateds here. As far as in southeast Ohio, a huge game going on with Waverly Tigers and Wheelersburg, two 3-0 and teams, and it is in the third quarter. We understand Waverly has taken a lead on Wheelersburg. 20-14, to the Tigers lead in that third quarter. That game is at Waverly, and certainly the winner of that game uh, sitting in the Catbird seat in the SOC Division Two. Well, we are... Just a couple minutes away from the third quarter kickoff, so we're going to take one more timeout, and we'll be back with third quarter action. It is the Jackson Ironman 20, Miami Trace 14. We'll be right back with third quarter kickoff in just two minutes.
Washington and the Miami Trade Panthers will receive the football to begin the second half. This is when it's nice to win the, the uh, coin toss and defer. So we do get an opportunity here to get the ball back and maybe make them in for uh, turning that ball over at the one yard line. There's a Tristan Prater dropping in deep, but both teams on their kickoffs tonight have not wanted to go deep. Not going deep, kicking high kicks, and it certainly worked for Miami Trace one time. That forced a turnover, gave them the short field. Ironman, on the other hand, have kicked it very short and very high. Have made a good play on it, but you give Trace decent field position every time you do that. Number 45, Warnock, will see it up at the 40 yard line. Back to center field. We'll start the second half. With the score, of the Ironman 20, Panthers 14. Trader deep. There's the whistle begins the second half, and the this one will go deep and will be taken at the 15 yard line near side of the field. And Jacob Wood, he spins it to the 25, back up at the 30 yard line. Jacob Wood, the ball carrier, returning the kickoff for Jackson. Good catch on that play. That keeps it from going all the way maybe into the end zone. That's the deepest kick we've seen tonight. It was. I mean, offensively coming out, we've moved the ball very well. As Pete Wilson said, uh, down a little bit stats the first quarter. We controlled the stats the second quarter. Let's see if we can keep that momentum up. Evan Spires continue to quarterback for the Airmen. He sends the McMahon away out wide to the right. Just the trader in the slot to the right. Empty backfield. And they take it. It's jet sweep to Crater, and Fires will keep it, but he'll lose about a half a yard. Back with inside the 30-yard line. Talk about the Ironman pursuit. Well, that time, about a majority of the defense met up and Fires in the backfield. They lose one yard on that play. That's a good one yard. Yeah. Off just inside the 29-yard line. He sent in front for Trace, who I think has played very well. Even though we moved the ball that second quarter there, this defense is better than I expected. But remember, each team only averaged giving up seven points a game, so you knew it was going to be quite a, a contest. Yeah. I'll go back to a high formation. Spires under center. Uh, hand off to the right side. And with some running room. And it's a blank and chip out to the 35-yard line. So gets a gain of six on that second down carry. Nice job of running by Holden Blank and chip. Got good uh, hole right up the middle of that offensive line. Picks up about six yards, third and five. I'm sorry, that was was that Hunter Webb carrying that ball? Pete, Pete quickly goes to change his numbers there. I always believe you guys need to tell me who carries the ball. <laughs> nice job of running by Hunter Webb. All right, third down and five. The airmen need this when they go into the eye formation. Higher pitches. Oh. There's some running room, and then it closes shy of the first down at the 37. It would be just short enough where you might have to consider a punt there, especially at this field position. That looks like the punt team is coming on the field for the Ironman. So the line of scrimmage is a 37. It's fourth down and three. And that sends the freighter and punt it the way. Punted once, and it was an outstanding effort. Nobody back deep. Wow, they, a little confusion there. No. Gilmore is going to go back deep. It was yeah. quite the threat. Trader, Trader. Nobody will pick like him. He could just about run for it, but he still kicks. It goes over everybody's head. I think the uh, Ironman uh, lateral roll, but it was down by the Ironman at the 28, 27-yard line. Trader, he intentionally was buying time, yes. but I do think he might have been able at the last second to tuck it, get the yard he's needed, but you certainly don't want to come up one yard short of that play. That's a 35-yard by Tristan Prater on one of the longest run-ups before he kicked the ball I've ever yep. seen. But really, no rush. Kind of Urban Meyer-type punt in it, what we've seen for years up at Ohio State. All right, new set of downs for the uh, Panthers as they come to the line of scrimmage for their first offensive series in the second half. And Melvin takes a snap and pitches out the left side. Ball is caught by Preston Reed. He a short gain on the play of about two. Job there by Nathan Manaway coming up, making that tackle in the open field. And he gives him a gain of three, second and seven. Jackson leads Miami Trace 20 to 14. Now from the left hash mark. Manaway has replaced Jacob Winters in there at the safety position. 
you know, more out wide to the right side. Play action, and boy, the Ironman had it all bottled up there. There will be a loss on the play back inside the 30-yard line. Landon Irwin blew that play up as he came in quickly, made the quarterback pitch before he wanted to, and then a host of Jackson Ironman met at the football for a tackle for a loss. It's third down and 11. Breaking that uh, play up. This guy uh, was helping with one of the passes, but did not have the time. Second down, or third down, and 11 for the Panthers. And the shotgun formation. Back and looking to pass on to Gilmore, and the ball will be incomplete. Wow, Gilmore. Gilmore came up lame. Around the 45 yard line, he started exactly. grabbing that left the uh, right leg like Let's he had a cramp. It's a cramp. He immediately gets up and running off the field, but I hope it wasn't a hamstring. It sure was, that's what it looked like, didn't it? Yes, he just did. went down. Throw was overthrown over he and Mason, but good coverage there by our senior cornerback. It brings up fourth down and 11. Funny situation now. You Jacob Wood coming in to turn this punt. The punter is the quarterback. And now officials time out to push the play clock back to a twenty seconds now on the play clock. You got plenty of time now. They'll get into that alternate punt formation. They line up in the shotgun and now drop back in the punt. And the fire is also back. And here's the punt by Melvin. It's a high end over in kick and it will be taken by Evan Spires at the 40, his 45 yard line and he gets about a five yard return out near midfield. Good job by the defense coming up strong there Pete Wilson to give the Ironman good field position. Right give uh, Melvin a 20 29 yard punt on that a and a return by Spires wasn't very long but by golly he took him five yards up the field almost midfield. Jackson will take over at their own 49. Cut that ball in a lot of traffic, too. You know, it's a little thing, but boy, you come up and catch that that way. You don't get that big rollout for another 15 yards on the punt. So we maybe save 15 to 20 yards when you come up and make that catch. Well, Gilmore's helped off the field. Yeah, he, he he's hurting. There's no question. You can see it on that one reception. He came back to play, but let's hope it's just cramping up for the young man. He is a truly, truly a very exciting player. Oops. And now a movement by Trey. Uh, I think the nose guard bumped it, or jumped it into the neutral zone, actually. On the, up the helmet of the five yard penalty. Center. First hey, Charles down. are great shot there of self control. They're jumping at you like that. You don't move. It gives your team five yards. So it's a five yard penalty. Moves the ball into Panther territory at the 46. They're going to have wide outs to both sides. I guess Rick goes in motion. Keep by. Got a good by. block. Got a hole as he opens up over the right side. Down inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. That is an Ironman first down. And kind of in the pistol formation, you, you split Traylon Davis back here in the backfield, and he came up with a great lead block. It allowed Evan to get that first down yardage needed. Yeah. First down is Ben Jackson, 39 yard, 38 yard line. Trailing in the backfield again with Evan. And Evan wants to pass, throwing it upfield. It's cut by Blankenship. He oh. goes all the way. Nice move, touchdown. Beautiful pass. Great catch by Holden. Blankenship runs right by one defender and into the end zone. Once again, a little different look for the Ironman offensively. Came out with a different look where they put Traylon Davis in the backfield to help pass block there. You got uh, slot receivers on both sides, and boy, they found the open blank and ship, but into the end zone they go. Jackson scores first here in the second half, 746 remaining. They'll go for just the, the one, Pierce. 26 to 14. I think it's good. Puts this one up and it is it's good. Twenty seven to fourteen. Jackson with the lead. We'll be back for Jackson and the football right up. 
A lot of land comes with a lot of work. The new Kubota MX Series has a lot to offer, including the versatility to mow, move hay bales, grade roads, and clear brush and snow. An optional spaces cab to keep you comfortable in any conditions. A front-end loader with excellent loader lift capacity, hydrostatic or gear transmission options, and affordably priced. This is your local Kubota dealer. Lancer equipment of Lucasfilm. The short kick uh, off taken by and number eight, Gage Miller, at the 24-yard line. And Miller turns it out close to the 33-yard line where the tackle was made by the airman. Brody Butcher again on that tackle. Had some help there by Caleb McGraw. Good job on the coverage. Eight, two plays, 51 yards to the Ironman. Touchdown comes on a 38-yard pass from... Evan Spires, his second touchdown of the game. This time, the Houghton blank a chip on a beautifully timed slant pattern, it looked like. Extra point is good by Coon Ironman now with a two-touchdown lead, 27-14. Still a lot of time to go, 7.40 to go, third quarter. And first and 10 for the Miami Trace Panthers. Weston Melvin is the quarterback. Officials are going to blow the whistle, and Trace is going to take a timeout. Nope. They look to they have Trace. confusion out there. Was the first field, charge timeout for the second half. On the field, been battling, probably, maybe it's just cramps. Let's hope that's all it is for the young man, but he is back playing because he's limped off a couple times already. 27 to 14 is, is the score, 7 40 remaining. And uh, Airman. Uh, Long time until we get there, but the post game will have the Monroe Collision Hit of the Game Award week announced, and we will have the Stockroom 601 Jason Gillum Insurance Player of the Game announced. We will have the best Batman decided. For those fans in the, the home stands, we've asked to announce that pizza slices in the Bamboo Concession Hall. stands are only one dollar. Right, so it's all very gracious every week. After the game. You know, we talked to a head coach at halftime who's not scared of a microphone. Coach Hall isn't either two of the easiest interviews you could ever have. Jeff Conroy, Hall of Fame coach Jeff Conroy and Coach Andy Hall. All right, first to ten now for the Panthers. Quick pitch to LeBeau. Left side, you lose one tackler at behind the line of scrimmage. It's still the last fly, and LeBeau is tackled. Right about the 34-yard line. That fly came in from deep in the secondary, but right up where the line of scrimmage is. You would have to think it's going to go against Miami Trace. Matt Mastin trying to sneak up there amongst the officials to hear what's going on. And Trace appears to be the team walking backwards. Well, they're yeah, still talking foul. it over. A legal block below the waist. Oh, on the ball. offense. Chop That's a 15-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. 15 yard penalty against Miami Trace. That's a big penalty. Boy, does that back him up. All the way back to the 30 yard line. Did I say 30? It's 20 yard line. 20 yard line. line. It might have been a 15 yard penalty, but it actually is a 13 yard walk off, but we'll take it. Okay. Trips wide to the right side on a first down and 23. For Miami Trade. And quick pitch. Oh, my God. Intercepted by the Airman Airman Spires or Drew Bragg, and he takes it inside the five. First is old Jackson. They, they had trips out here to this side. The middle man didn't look like he was covered, but we did have him covered because Drew Bragg was stepping up right in the passing lane, stepped right in front of that football, intercepts it, takes it the other way, and takes it all the way down inside the five yard line. Second interception of the night by the junior. Uh, Three safety, and boy, well, that was a pretty one. And he knew what to do once he had it. Uh, he, as he immediately hit towards the goal line, thought he was going to get in, but he got cut off all the way down, though, to the three-yard line, his second interception of the game. Second and third quarter so far have been all Jackson, and now they have an opportunity here to give themselves a little bit of a cushion in this game. Raider goes wide on the right side. 
High formation from the airman. Handoff to Blankenship, I believe, was the ball. It game. was. Gets down to the one yard line. It bounced around, took a couple of tacklers on there, gained one yard, it looks like. Mark him at the two. Yardage has been tough in there. After the end file, it is marked at the two yard line. Seven minutes remaining in this third quarter. Jackson trying to capitalize on another. Miami Trace turnover. Hunter Webb in there at the tailback position. Go out of the eye. And end off. Left side. Hunter Webb with the carry and a touchdown. Good lead block in there. They put Traylon Davis at the eye. He leads to the there at the left side of that offensive line. But they did such a good job with Cross and Maston. And boom, into the end zone goes Hunter Webb. Hunter's been such a solid running back in the second half of the last two weeks. He was. He just looks, he's ready for varsity competition, no question about it. Gives us depth at that running back position. Now 33 needed tonight, right? Very much so needed. 33 to 14, the extra point on the way by Isaac Kuhn. Kick on the way. And it is up and down the middle. 34 to 14, the airman is... Increase the lead to 20 now over the Miami Trace Panthers. We'll take another break. It will be back with more third quarter action right up. Man back to the 20 yard line, far side of the field, trying to get that sideline. He gets his return by number 33, Landon Cope. Yard line. Mason Carroll got the first hit on there. Got him down, did good coverage there by that kickoff team. They're going to mark it back inside the 30. That's always good coverage. High scrimmage will be the 29 yard line. The Miami Trace will have it. They're trailing Jackson Iron by 20. I see David Norris in there at one of the defensive tackle positions. Part of that rotation. I like to keep those defensive front guys fresh. Trips again wide to the right side. And from the shotgun is Melvin. Heading off to LeBeau. And he oh, hit hard. Gosh. Good hit in there. Stop shy of this 31 yard line. But LeBeau pays for that one. Well, I think Traylon Davis and Grant Madison both met him there. Two of the hardest hitters you're going to find for the Ironman. And wow. He got a couple yards, but he paid for it. They drove him back about five yards. One of the trace players is down, and immediately the uh, trainers come running out to check on him. It is LeBeau, uh, running back. It's just uh, carrying it. Looks to be like a cramp. Like a cramp again, yeah. Cool night now. but It does feel like fall a little bit, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Beautiful night for football. And, uh, you know, you, do, you probably did need a – sweater or white jacket or something to stay comfortable, but it is a fun night, and it does feel like it's football. How many weeks in a row will you go with shorts? Shorts? Ah, I'm not going to break any records. I'm not that tough, but uh, it was you know, all day long. Such a beautiful day out. I had to go short still. Still attending to LeBeau. You got these ugly hairy legs. You can look at the pictures of the one. Okay. 6.25 to go in the third quarter. He is being treated like a cramp so that's that's you know it's not a good thing but it certainly beats serious injury remember jacob winters earlier in this game had to come out they put ice on the knee certainly hoping that young man is not seriously hurt it has thinned out the jackson backfield a little bit with he and kate wolford kate not playing at all tonight and winners out most of this game so uh a lot of airmen have really stepped up uh, the, the was able to jog off the field. 
actually worked on his right leg. So here we go. Second down and eight for the Panthers. That, that quick toss out in the flat to the left side and pin it for uh, H. Miller, and it's incomplete. Good pressure by the airman. Good pressure of the airman right away, and Tristan Prater right there in front of the receiver. It goes incomplete, so you're faced with that third and eight. Jackson defense was so good earlier in this quarter in their first possession. Let's see if they can do it again and get the football back in a Ironman team that's all of a sudden offensively warmed up quite a bit. It's like they've come to life. Yes. Third down and eight ball at the 31 yard line. Melvin takes the snap, looks right. Now over the middle, goes out in the flat. It is caught, juggled by the receiver Haddock. He will go down. After about a one-yard gain, good, good catch with the one hand. You know, he, he, good catch, but it looked like he was open out there, but really good pursuit there for coverage by uh, Evans Fires and then Grant Madison. Both of them come around, make the tackle, and comes up well short of the yardage needed. Picked up two, fourth down, and a long six now for Miami Trace. The back-to-back, or the nearly back-to-back interceptions by Bragg. I think they did a little bit nervous throwing that one downfield. Funny situation for the Panthers. Quarterback Melvin, who also is the punter, steps back in funny formation. Fires and Wood back deep. They fake the punt. It's the Haddock. He will not get anything. Loses yard. He thought the fake punt. And uh, the Irmans take over inside the 35-yard line. Blake Cross all over that play. Hits him first. Grant Madison in there for the tackle. Great job there by that Jackson defensive front, and wow, that's a gutsy call. They needed a good six yards, it seemed like, and uh, they go to the fake, not even close to it. The Ironman gets a short field, Pete. I think uh, Coach Williams just felt they had to keep the ball there, and I agree. Maybe, you know, that's not the best fake punt in the world, but that's what they tried. It's basically a run up the middle by the up man. Tire sends McMahon way wide to the right side. Here the near side of the field is Crater. Like a ship in the slot. Here's Fires wanting to pass. He's got pressure. Now those are that field, and it will be nearly intercepted by the Panthers. Number 25 is Hunter McBee. He had his hands on it, but uh, couldn't bring it in. Look, you know, Evans been putting that right on the mark so close. That time there was good coverage. He uh, stepped back, got a ball up there, and cut that block. The second and 10. Clock is stopped after the incomplete pass. Five minutes, 11 seconds remaining. In the third quarter, that's been all Jackson. I remember a couple weeks ago when uh, Evan got some snaps over at Greenfield, and Coach said we got one of the very best second quarterbacks you could ever ask for, and he's proving that tonight. Uh, how the I formation is uh, handoff to Hunter Webb, and Webb breaks one tackle in the backfield and then turns a negative play into positive yardage going out of bounds around the 26th. Well, he was hit hard in the backfield, and he, uh, he used that stiff arm. Uh, obviously, the coaches coached that. Yeah, a number of our runners have utilized that and got extra yardage out of it. He takes it all the way down to the 26-yard line. Step a third down and three, where it looks like there's going to be a loss on the play, but Hunter Webb gets a stiff on breaking the tackle. But Manowake is wide to the right side, and you now the back is in the eye, and fires. Uh, misdirection play to Webb, and he breaks through. He has the first down. Pulls onto the football down inside the 15-yard line. Good trap spot there by Blake Cross. Good feed there by Traylon Davis. And Hunter Webb running with authority into the red zone. First down and 10 now for Jackson. He Webb coming off the bench. Four carries, 27 yards, and looks like he belongs out there, doesn't it? Your favorite line, Dan, certainly does. Certainly does. Yes. <laughs> First and ten for Jackson. Back to the eye. Then Spires taking a snap. Wanting to uh, pass. Has pressure. And he will go down. Held on to the football. The ball was bobbled. He was hit immediately in the backfield. That could have been a turnover. Instead, Evans at least tucks it, takes the loss. And we play for another play. Yeah, the loss is back to the 22-yard line. The loss is that's about seven yards, eight yards. So second down and 18 now. 
Ball at the 22 yard line. Thirty-four, fourteen. Jackson with the lead. They're now facing the second down and long. They hand off to Blankenship, and he breaks the tackle in the back. Just around the hill, go in. No, the touchdown. So we have a penalty flag thrown in the backfield. Boy, he slid two defenders there. Did a great job of accelerating and into the end zone, and the flag comes from a spot you just know it's not going to stand. We have two flags thrown on the field. All the flags on the hash this one out. Ed Lines went through one later. The referee threw the flag immediately. Holden showed some a burst there, didn't he? We have Holding, number 62 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. Ooh, yeah, we're going back. Yeah, we got all the way down to the 15. Had first down, but now we're all the way back to the 35. We got to get to the five. So obviously, second and 30, second and 31 on the scoreboard. Need to get to the 14-yard line. Or to the uh, yes. Motion by the airman, and here's Fires running the pass. Forced out of the pocket, looking deep, and it will be caught. The 10-yard line, far side of the field, the breaking the catch. Holding Blankenship. Evan able to buy time, made one tackler miss, rolls to his right, and allows Blankenship to stay in the pattern, and they just puts it right on the mark, and a fir- uh, not a first down, sorry, gets it all the way down to the 12-yard line for the airman. Now, much more doable. Third down and eight as we... Approach the three-minute mark here in the third quarter. Has Pete's math skills. How far that pass? A 28-yard gain there by the Ironman from the 35 down to the eight. Correct? No, 12. 12. Make 12. it a 23-yard gain. Now the officials stop play and they. <laughs> now we're ready for play. Third down and eight. Fires works out of the shotgun and takes it, and then he'll keep cool. it go right up the middle. It closed quickly. It closed quickly, as you just said, and he is in, just at the 10 yard line. Faking the jet, and Evan keeps it running behind that left side. Looks like a good hold to point of attack, but Trace. This is a pretty good football team. They close quickly, tackling at the 10 yard line. Now we're looking at that fourth down and five. Ironman can decide where they want to kick a field goal, but it looks like we're going to play for it. As they break the huddle, McMahon away goes wide to the right. Carol in the uh, slot that way. Yeah. On the left side of the Ironman, what a yeah. timeout on the field. 2 0 1 remain, third quarter. Jackson, 34. Panthers, 14. We'll be back after this timeout. Is pain from an injury interrupting your life's game plan? With comprehensive and minimally invasive surgical services available at multiple locations, Holzer has the team to keep you off the sideline. With Holzer on your team, you'll be in the game for the moments that matter most, like retaining your championship title. Holzer Health System. Excellent care every time. No matter what, got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the field, Tried to overcome a lot of penalties tonight, Pete Wilson. This is another one of those drives. We keep fighting our way back in it. Well, Coach Hall figuring that, uh, you know, he needs five yards. If it doesn't work, Miami Trace is deep in its own territory. So the defense is playing very well right now. From the shotgun, blanket ship in motion. And now we have motion. Two Ironman in motion at the same time. That will cost the five yards. On the offense, Canada five yard penalty. Here. Still fourth down. Feels like Canada tonight. It's cold as yeah, it is. It's a little risk. You're still debating whether to tee it up and play golf in the morning. Ain't gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, cold air kind of rolling in this weekend. 
All right, fourth down and 11. Lincolnship in motion once again. There's Spires looking into the end zone. Caught by the Ironman touchdown. Christian Brown. Well, it no, it's Christian. Christian. Yeah, it's Christian Brown. I think all uh, Ironman just showed everything flowing to the right side of things, and they had Crater then one on one on the back side. You can see Evan Spires went to fake the jet sweep. Roll to his left, and then he just one on one finds one of the top receivers around. Tristan Prater goes up high, gets it in his hands, and the ball goes up in the air, and he stays with it like we've seen him do, and come down with that touchdown reception. Had to twist to bring it down, and he held on. Here's the extra point attempt by Isaac Coon on the way, and it is good. Forty-one to fourteen, a break in the action. Action Valley, Miami Trace, and we'll be back after this. Hi, it's Kylie, and you know what time of year it is, football time. And our friends at Jackson Express, home of Big Papa's Pizza, subs, chicken, and more, have got you covered before or after the game. My dad just loves picking up a pizza and subs, or even chicken tenders with potato wedges. And he always gets my favorite, the super cheesy pizza. Oh, yeah. Give me a J. J. Give me an H. H. Another short kickoff by the Ironman, taught by the uh, Miami Trace receiver on the far side of the field at the 33-yard line. Mason Pro down there quickly, he touches him, he goes down, and it'll be Miami Trace ball about the 33. And oh, Pete Wilson, we overcome penalties again. Right, and uh, on fourth and 11, that's what it was, I believe, on the touchdown play. Ironman ended up going sixth place, 33 yards after Miami Trace fails to convert on the fake punt. The Ironman take advantage of the short field, but have to score on fourth and long. And it uh, comes on a twisting, contorted catch in the end zone by none other than Tristan Prater, his third touchdown catch of the game. That was from Evan Spires, who is now 7 of 9 passing, by the way. Extra point by Kuhn. Ironman lead 41 to 14, 34 unanswered points. There's Melvin handing up for pitching to uh, pitching uh, and running out of bounds. Looks like it'll be a loss of the play. That ball here was uh, number 33, Landon Coke. Good strike up out to the line of scrimmage. Good pursuit there by Landon Urban and a couple of the other, the Ironmen over there. Looked like also we had uh, Braden Powell pursuing, chasing him out of bounds. And uh, boy, we talked to his coach Hall in the pre I did say, I think Tristan Prater, one of the finest receivers I've ever seen, put the red helmet on it. He is proving again tonight. And here's the second down and a long and good tackle by the arm and making it, tripping the uh, runner up at the uh, landing token. A no collision hit of the worst week winner last week. Traylon Davis gets that tackle. Gain of about one, third and nine. Now the ball rests at the 35 yard line at Miami Trace. They trail Jackson. 41-14 with 120 remaining in this third quarter. We've always said our secondary is a strength, and it looks like Miami Trace has gotten a little nervous to throw the ball downfield after we've had three interceptions tonight. Got to the right side, and out of the gun, a quick pitch to the right, to LeBeau. LeBeau breaks the tackle, and it will be stopped shy of the first down at the 42-yard line. Well, they went for it on fourth down with the fake punt last time. Now LeBeau gets hit. And he is down again. Gets if he's going to be about two yards short of the first down yardage needed. Well, he went on fourth and six from back at the thirty yard line. Right. I think they might go for this. One. And there's still Lebeau. It's still a cramp the way they're treating it. Immediately their trainer runs out. You know, trying to stretch that leg out. Fifty-seven seconds to go here in the third quarter. Need to get to the forty-four yard line. So it's a long one. With fifty-seven seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's interesting, Pete, the statistics, the statistics did change after that first quarter, didn't they? Right, they did. And, it, and I tell you what, it says something about the Ironmen and the coaching staff. 
Uh, talk about adversity. It wasn't looking good. Figure you come into this game, it's going to be a test, but you're the favorite. Score so easily to start the game, and then suddenly you're down 14-7 to seven after a couple of big plays. Your quarterback is hurt. Your young freshman running back is already out for the game, and suddenly, man, you're you're it's a gut it's a gut check for you. And the Ironmen haven't had anything close to that coming into this game. Pitts have showed some depth, and the coaching staff has made some very nice adjust adjustments on the run. These are things you don't plan for in a game, but boy, the Ironmen have stepped up. Coaches have given them some different looks, and they've taken advantage of it. Looks like it's going to be fourth and a very long one or short two. Bo is up now, and he will work his way to the sideline. Second time he's yeah, done it. Yeah, it's, it's a cramp, and he is jogging off now, so there's a chance we'll see him again. Fourth and, he mentioned just a long one, all at the 48 yard line. They're in their punt formation where they line up in that shotgun and then adjust back to a punt. Jackson not being fooled at all. They are back in a punt. Let's see if they go for it again. And nobody deep for the Ironman as the punter waits for the snap. High snap. He brings it down. Low kick. And nobody back there takes a uh, Ironman bounce, actually, and will be down at the 26-yard line. Decent job there defensively for the Ironman because you know what? He kicked it low. You weren't going to catch it anyway, so that way you made sure they weren't going to try any trick play. And Jackson takes over. On downs, 34 seconds to go in this third quarter. Pete, defense has been outstanding this third quarter. That's a 31-yard punt by Miami Trace. And even though Miami Trace has been so dangerous offensively with with LeBeau and then being able to throw to Gilmore, they haven't had a first down since the, early in the second quarter. Wow, good stat there. Right, and you wouldn't have thought that watching the game, would you? No. no. Well, right, defense has certainly picked it up, but that first quarter, Trace looked very good. We have been very good the second and third. And the Tires continue to be the quarterback for the Airmen, Jacob Winters. The Airmen want to run out of time. And that play clock down to one. They do get it off. Here's a handoff to God. Hunter Webb, and he breaks through. Hunter Webb with a nice carry, about 10 yards on that. Looks like they're going to. Give him the first down. Aspen and Cross on this side. Give Webb some room to run. I like putting Traylon Davis at the lead. There's a fullback position. He's just been more like a lead blocker every time. And Webb running hard. First down run. 20 seconds remain third quarter. Ironman can let it run out. And I think that's what they're going to do. The uh, fourth, third quarter has come to an end. Jackson leading 41 to 14 over Miami Trace. We'll break it away. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this timeout. Gain of 
Yeah, and they have the luxury now where they can actually almost use each play as long as they want to. Let the time run down some. The clock is in their favor. We are in the fourth quarter with a 41 to 14 lead. At one time, the Airmen trailed 14 to seven, and they have ran off 34 straight points. 30 yes, 34. High formation once again on second and seven. Spires wants to pass, going deep. The ball will be out to Drew Craig. He's got the catch at the 30 and then tackled inside the 30 to 27 yard line. That one is all the money again to well, Drew But I tell you what, Evan has so much confidence in his receiver. He just laid it out there to let the receiver make a play. Drew Bright came back to it a little bit, went up a little higher than the defense did, made the catch. Very pretty play. One-on-one football out there, receiver or quarterback. Good to see Drew put in the offense. He's had two interceptions today, so he's catching the ball very well, but that's a good catch. First and 10 at the 27-yard line of Miami Trace. Split back formation, unbalanced line to the right side, and they run that way with... Uh, How about that? Traylon Davis is the carry from the split back formation. Yardage down to the 24. Traylon Davis, Division One recruit, going to West Virginia. Been all kinds of positions he can play, offense and defense. Great to see him as a lead blocker this whole second and third, well, the whole second half. Now to get a carry, reward him a little bit. He picks up three yards, in second and seven. We are in the fourth quarter with the Airmen lead at 41 14. Greg splits wide to the left. Trader here the near side of the field. And the handoff. Another good left. Cut. Another, Another nice good cut. cut. Another he good cut. All the way to the corner. Can he get the final one? He does. Wow. That's nice down. run by Hunter Webb. He broke a couple of tackles, but it is a race to the pylon. And he wins the race, and that puts the airman up. 47-14. Well, I tell you, Grant Madsen and Blake Cross gave Hunter plenty of room on that left side and then went. How many good cuts did you say? I said two. That's what I thought. Two, two very good cuts. Another stiff arm and into the end zone. Very impressive running. That man plays well in second half. Yes, he does. What's our favorite two woods? Dan Bunning Clock? Oh, I think it is. We've got that. We did not think at 14-7 to we'd see that tonight. Sir, is the extra point by Coon. It is up. It is good. 48 to 14. Jackson with the lead. And we'll take a test break. Be back before Jackson Maryland football right after this. Jackson, Wilson, Oak Hill, or MacArthur. Start your day off with a McGriddle. For lunch, how about a Big Mac or Quarter Pounder with cheese? And dinner, enjoy some McNuggets or maybe a great shake and fries. Whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you're always cooking up something great from your Jackson, Wilson, Oak Hill, or MacArthur McDonald's. And I'm 11. And you will too. Back here at the Jackson High School, not, as the Airmen lead at 41 to 48 to 14. Kickoff goes to that no, no man zone, and the Ironman nearly come up with it at the 32 yard line. Nice throw right on top of it. it. You know, he has to hit the ground. We had that issue in week one. But then, if he could have got, if he could have grabbed it, he's running toward the end zone at full speed, but he hits it, goes out of bounds, and Miami Trace will take over, and they'll mark it at the 33. And boy, Pete Wilson. What a run by Hunter Webb. My gosh, five plays, 74 yards, and he had a hold, but then he knew what to do with it when he had the daylight, for sure. And the Airmen has increased the lead where we do have a running clock now. 9.30 remaining in the game as the Panthers come to the line of scrimmage. Melvin takes the handoff, or snaps the handoff to LeBeau. He cuts to the outside, and LeBeau tripped up. 
at the 45-yard line. He picks up 13 yards and a Miami Trace first down. Six man away, who's in there at that safety position. It's another nice tackle there, but not till LeBeau shows you the skills that young man has. He's had to fight hard for his yardage, but he is special. 16 carries, 50 yards. I'd say that's a good job by the defense. That's a very good job. And that is Miami Trace's first first down in a long time, number six of the night. Snap back. Uh, LeBeau once again with the carry, getting close to midfield. And he'll cross the midfield stripe. And get to the Ironman territory at the 49-yard line before being driven backwards. David Norris in there. Caleb McGraw come up off the bottom of that pile. About a five-yard gain by the outstanding running back. See Ty Jones come into the lineup. The second down is five. For the Panthers. Ball at the Airman 49-yard line. Airman showing blitz. They play action. They're throwing in trouble, and he will go down. Landon Earth backs him down from behind. Had some help. With uh, Brody Butcher, it's the two of them. Well, that's one of those blind side hits by Landon Irwin, the senior, did a good job there. And great job by Evan Spires because they wanted to throw to the flats, and Evan stepped right in front of the receiver. Quarterback had to look downfield for a second receiver. And about that time, Landon Irwin wraps him up and brings him down. It's an eight yard loss back to the 43 yard line. And the snap, and here's LeBeau. Oh! He is this hard, stays on his feet, and he's finally brought down the Madison with a hit. Ouch. <laughs> did that, what do you say? Ouch. say? How did he stand on his feet? I'm not sure. That's two great football players meeting, but Grant Madison drives him back five yards. That that was that was big, big hit. And the line of scrimmage will be the 45-yard line. Timeout was called on him with a bow. Really shaken up there. He's, uh, I don't think he knows what, what city he's in. No, a young man's come off too many times, and at this type point in the game, he doesn't need to see the field again, I don't think. I mean, I, I'm sure he wants to. He's a competitor, but, whoa, he took a shot there. So it's fourth down, and he's 11. Ball at the 45-yard line. Have you ever been hit like that? No, I don't believe I have. Wow. And I, was in a, I was in a car wreck one time. Yeah, and you weren't hit that hard then, probably. I was not. That was a train wreck. A fourth down is certainly a punting situation for the Miami Trace. The clock is eating its way up, too, because we are in a running clock situation. Under seven minutes to go in this contest. And a penalty flag comes in. It will be procedure against. The ball foul. Miami Trace. False start. Five yard penalty. Number 53 We've on the offense. Penalties, it's a five yard penalty. Day, a lot of Still tonight. fourth down. Yeah, they've had more than us tonight. They've had some big penalties both ways. Trace has had uh, have had 11 penalties tonight. Had 17 last week. Funny situation. Fourth and 16. That's hard to say when you have 11 that you've made improvement. Melvin gets this one away, and will be Spires taking it at the 33 yard line and tackled after a short return. To the 35. And surprisingly, a flag comes down right at the 40. It's going to be, it looks like the initial is a hold. Should back us up a little bit. 620 while the officials the clock doesn't stop while they're blocking the back. Out, then they'll start Number 10 on the receiving team. The football. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Each team First has down. two timeouts. 48 to 14, your Ironman lead. The amazing thing is, it's a 41 straight points by your Jackson Ironman. Down 14 to 7. That seems like a long time ago now, doesn't it? Does, it? Yeah. Ironmen are trying to get a whole second unit in here, and boy, have they performed well the last couple of weeks. Remember the momentum that Trace had in that uh, first quarter, and uh, the things weren't looking real good. The positive for the Ironmen, but no, they weren't. But wow, we, it would be fun to talk to Coach Hall and just see how he feels, how his team picked it up. I mean, I think there were some adjustments made at halftime. Might even been some attitude adjustments, uh, but I'll yeah. tell you what, they sure certainly showed up and have played so well these last three quarters. Second unit on the field now for the Airmen on the first to ten from the 25 yard, their own 25 yard line. Jake Malone will now be the quarterback. Hands off the second back through, picks up about three yards, right up the middle to the uh, 28 yard line. 
I'm not even sure who carried it, Pete. Could you tell? Um, I'm watching him walk back in there, but he wouldn't show me his number. Maybe Butcher gain is up three yard out to the twenty or twenty eight yard line. Clock is inside five five thirty now remaining in the game. And here's Malone, second back through. He's got the hand off to Davis. I was going to say it should be Davis. Davis with the carry. I think he probably had to carry on the first down. I'm guessing you're right. It's a short gain, just shy of the 25-yard line. Trent Evans in there for the Ironman. He always stands out. He is number 68. I think Woodyard's out there. Levi Woolham, some of the offensive linemen that are there. Like I said, the whole second unit that has played so very well the last two weeks. They've come in and competed and showed that they are very capable. The depth on this football team, very impressive up to this point. They're down in six now for the Airmen ball at the 24-yard line. Or 29-yard line. Here's Malone, who wants to pass. Got a man out there and take a wood, and he passes broken up by uh, Gage Miller, intended for Jacob Wood. And I'll bring up fourth down now for Jackson. Clock keeps running. Ironman now fourth and about seven at this part of the field. You almost have to punt, but Coach doesn't look like he's put the punt team out there. It's hard to get a second unit punt team ready. I don't think he wants starters back on the field. I, I agree with you. There's Ashton Cornell back deep at the Oh, good, good kick. Uh, kick and it takes an Ironman roll across midfield and out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Jake Malone does a good job there out of the shotgun. Quick kicks it down there, pushes him back a little bit. Clock in our favor, fourth quarter, as this one's winding down. And the Ironman getting very close to being 4-0 on this season. Malone gets credit for a 21-yard punt there. We didn't think he was going to do it, but he did. And Miami Trace will take over at the 50-yard line. Only 3.48 to go, and we are in a running plus situation. If they out of bounds, ball went out of bounds at 50. 48-14 as the Panthers come to the line of scrimmage. Shotgun formation once again. And there's a snap back, and it's a fumble, a loose ball, and the quarterback has to dive on it all the way back to the 31. Well, it was a low snap, and it was a line drive, frozen rope, yes. real low, and the quarterback did not have a chance, so it does a smart thing. It just falls on the ball at the 31. Tyler Messer in there in a hurry, runs back, touches him, takes him down at the right, a 30-yard line. So, wow, that puts him in a tough second and 30 situation. We overcame a second and 31 earlier on the, one of those drives. Yeah. Can be done, but I don't know if tri- Panthers are going to get it done this time. Trips here to the near side of the field. And hand off to Haddock. And Haddock breaks a tackle and then being chased it and brought down at the 35-yard line. Braden Powell would not give up on that one. Held on to him. It made it look like a long run, but it was only five yards. And Powell with the tackle. Third on the ways. Down inside two minutes and 30 seconds remaining. School board shows second down and 25 now. Sort of sounded like the, the winners tonight in the front traffic conference, probably Chillicothe and Courthouse. Courthouse at one point uh, throwing a shutout against Hillsboro. Next week opponent for the Ironman, Hillsboro. And a little confusion in the backfield. Haddock has it. And he's trying to the left side, breaking tackle. Midfield, there's a stiff arm. And now a run out of bounds. And he will pick up uh, a lot of the original yardage or, and bounce back to the uh, near midfield. But we have Late a flag came in. Andrew Davis gets the tackle, but let's see where this one goes. Way after the tackle, the flag comes down. Pointing toward the Ironmen, so I think the Ironmen are going to back up. They're immediately walking this one off. Unsportsmanlike conduct. I think it's a 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct call. 15-yard penalty. At the end of the run. It was a late hit after the, uh, Could have been that. He was. He, 
Andrew Davis tackled him out of bounds, and if he got hit also after that, they might have called that. So it is a first down now for the uh, Panthers as they lose the line of scrimmage to the 35-yard line of Jackson. A couple snaps left of this one as we approach the one-minute mark. The new quarterback in. It's hand, hands off to Haddock. Haddock is still on his feet. Picks up the yardage down to the 25, and that's very close to a first down. Number 15, that's Shea Salyers. He's the quarterback, uh, just a sophomore, 150 pounds. Rapes with the tackle. First down yardage, 42 seconds. Clock running. Another first down from Miami Trade. The Airman 25. Sawyer's play action. Their hands off to Haddock. And Haddock will carry some of the pile with him as he gets about a five yard gain down to the 20 yard line. David Norris wraps him up. I'll tell you what, if they don't move quickly, that could have been the final ga- play of this game. 17 seconds running clock. They are trying to get to the line to play one more time. Sawyer's has trips to the right side. Takes the snap. Hands off to the Haddock. Haddock breaking some tackles, and then he'll be brought down, and he has the first down. The, the clock does expire. 48 to 14 is your final. The Jackson Army remain undefeated at uh, 4 and 0. Miami Trades will suffer their first defeat. Uh, remain at the uh, 3 and 1. Go ahead. Uh, Back to the uh, Those teams head to the locker room with the arm and with the... So it looks like Jackson's going to go down in the end zone where they'll talk things over a little bit. Stay with us. Boy, all kinds of pre-game activities. So we're going to stay with We're going to give away some awards. We're going to hear Pete's working on statistics right now. And uh, we'll always hear from Coach Hall. And uh, this was an interesting one. Uh, Ironman got all out of the shoot pretty quick and then slowed up a little bit. Miami Trace played some outstanding football. Took a 14-7 lead, which is really a good thing. Sometimes it kind of wakes up your team a little bit. Uh, made some great adjustments in half on there. And played fabulous really the last three quarters and run off 41 straight points. And the Ironman went at 48-14. We'll take a timeout and we'll be back. We'll talk more about Jack Wins tonight over Miami Trace. And right now, you're listening to Jackson Ironman Football on Mix 96 minutes. True fans know that success in football is all about